whatever. Hey everyone, welcome to a what would be bonus episode of the Magic Box, but since uh, last week was a bit of an abortion, not going to lie, uh, I think that it's kind of important for us to uh, bring it back, center it a little bit, and bring you uh, a much smoother episode. Having too many guests, uh, not doing a lot of prep with those people ahead of time, to really have a podcast format instead of a lot of people yelling at the screen, and not really good, if you're doing a very good job of podcasting, Yeah, I was a little ashamed of what we put out, so... Beyond keeping in track with it once a week, we thought um, this would be a great opportunity to also get the live audience on the East Coast side and uh, bring an extra episode here. So here we are on Monday, the afternoon after the mocks. We may touch on the cube portion of the mocks today if we have time, but we'd also like to uh, get more information about uh, the pack contents from the cube packs, uh, Sam Party or Smidster? SMDster? Smidster. Uh, from the Mox, who's a good friend of ours, uh, would like us to do a little analysis breakdown there. But he did, ended up in a very unconventional deck, as we found out. Yeah. Uh, there was so, certainly a weird one. But it was effective. Uh, he, uh, great thing about Sam is he's cubed enough that he knows how to make it work. And I love that of his deck. I really wish we could have watched every single one of his games. I'm sure it would have been exciting. But for what we did get, uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. It's funny. I watched the stream for like two to three hours at various points, and I did not see him on it once. <laughs> I would come in and out, and I did catch him. I would definitely, like, I would, like, have the audio on in the background and wait to hear his name, and mm -hmm. then, like, cut back, uh, yeah. even in the standard portion, uh, but mostly the cube portion was what I was really interested in. We, yeah. Are we live? No. Oh, it says we're, it says we're offline on the Twitch side. I don't know. You don't know? I, I mean, we're live. Huh. Weird. Nothing has changed. Interesting. All right, well, we'll just... Trudge onward because we know the audio is recording. So why, why bother? I know we again we had a computer crash last week as well, which is which has now put us very much on edge. It's very frightening. Yeah, it's true. I'm, I'm pins and needles. We're gonna have to reload that side. We can't see the chat window. Yeah, we can. It's right there. Yeah. Ah, there it is. Yeah, it still says offline. Okay. So that being said, again, anyone who's recorded a podcast out there, the other thing about uh, our mid-show crash last week was uh, you kind of get in a groove. You're kind of talking about a subject, and all of a sudden, everything just shits out on you. The worst part, too, is like I didn't even know the moment that it crashed, because like, everything on my screen was frozen. But like, it's not like my computer blue screen or anything. So we were just talking, and then I looked up, and I was like, hey, wait a minute. The video is not changing at all anymore. You were literally uh -oh. trying to click through. Yeah. Uh, okay, so as we wait for the room to populate over on uh, the broadcast side, we'll hesitate a little bit before we get into Pick-A-Pack, uh, but we'll say to kind of uh, cover on the show today, you know, there's been a lot of talk, uh, you know, a lot of people over the years have definitely asked me how you get into Cube, how do you start cubing? It seems like this huge hill to climb to go from zero to Cube. Um, and in the past, I'd written a skeleton cube list, which we may, may look at the old version just for kicks. Uh, but we also have, for you special today, I spent a lot of time over the weekend putting together what I would consider to be a, a very good skeleton cube list here for 2013. Um, if you were to go from zero to cube tomorrow, what you could put together pretty much on a budget, have it work out, and have it look really great. Um, and it mirrors a little bit of what I did back in 2009 for it. So, uh, you know, again, if you want to to have that, well, we are live. Mark, we're sure we're live? All right. Yep. Yeah. Eck is doing a little testing in the background. Make Just sure making we're still sure there. everything is not bursting into flames actively. All right. So that that's our main topic today. We'll, we'll touch back on the You Make the Card, uh, and there are other topics that we'd want to talk about, but we don't have a lot of time today. Again, we'll have the regular show on Wednesday to cover those those other things. We actually have a long laundry list of topics we will cover eventually. And some of them bleed together. You have the conversation from last week talking about uh, just the, the tap lands from Mirage entering cube. Kind of want to talk about lands in general, talk about um, thinning your deck, graveyards, uh, resources, and those kind of things. I'm not sure in what order we'll hit those topics, but those will all be things we will touch on on the show. But let's get right into our pick-a-pack for this week. Or today, one of the two of this week, of this day, we'll bring it up, and I'll let uh, Eck tell everyone at home what we're looking at. Okay, so for today's pack, we have Tangle Wire, Force of Will, Celestia Guild Mage, Incinerate, Hellion Crucible, Orms Thunder, Flame Tongue Kavu, 
the Abyss, Consecrated Sphinx, Kozilek Butcher of Truth, Stronghold Rats, Kadama's Reach, Sphinx of Dwar Isle, Volcanic Island, and Aether Vial? You say that questioningly, like, are these cards? <laughs> well, I mean, not a lot of them really are stellar. Really? You've, you've said all the of fact, them? The pretty bad. Really? I think so. I disagree. Uh, it's so weird to me, seeing the 3x5 layout on all these cube packs, my eyes seem to always kind of go dead center. I think uh, the last time this really happened was with Chain Lightning, it was like the only red card. <laughs> Just staring back at you. Yeah, now I'm like, the Abyss, I have to draft the Abyss deck, there's the Abyss. It's also kind of the only black card. Uh, I think if I was to open this pack, I would have a hard time not taking the Abyss. Really? If I opened this pack, I would have a hard time not taking Tangle Wire. Oh, because that card is so fun, and the deck that it goes in is also sweet. Tell us more about the deck that it goes in. Then. I mean, just being like the generally red, like, really aggressive list, potentially like even LD. Like, Tangle Wire is just. Tangle Wire is one of those poster childs for cards that look fair but are in fact no way fair. I'll give you that. Um, now, you, you were very quick to say that Tangle Wire uh, red cards. Do you think that in the cube, Tangle Wire is a red card? I mean, it tends to work best in red just because, like, it's... The best use of Tangle Wire is, like, play a one-drop, play a two-drop or two one-drops, then play Tangle Wire. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a dream. I mean, it's not, obviously not outside of the realm of possibility, uh, but that is the goal. You know, top-decking Tangle Wire is rarely good right. late but, in the game. But uh, also playing it in the better. middle of the game could... Top decking Tangle Wire is potentially better in red because you also have access to Shrapple Blast. And land disruption spell. Ways, yeah. ways to kind of choke your opponent out of resources. Maybe they're holding back on lands because you played Ankh of Mishra. Maybe you can tap your Ankh of Mishra to Tangle Wire. Like, that's living the dream. Yeah. Uh, these are all true statements. It's just so weird to me. I, I, look at, I look at Tangle Wire as kind of the throwaway card in this pack. It's definitely wow. not on the power level of. There are some throwaway cards in this pack, but they are not Tangle Wire. I mean, purely on power level, to me it's like Abyss, Spaghetti Monster, two Sphinxes, and a Flame Tongue Kabu. I mean, sure, like, those are the most powerful cards, but... So you would take a Tangle Wire over the most powerful cards in the pack? Like, the thing is, is like, I'm happy... I'm happy taking Tangle Wire out of this pack because it's... Other than Incinerate, it's really the only, like, purely aggressive card in the pack. Like, poor poor Flame Tongue Kavu, poor Celestia Guild Mage. Those are both very mid rangey. Like, I. Poor Aether Vile? I, I, honestly, like, in good r aggressive red decks, I really don't want to be playing Flame Tongue Kavu. Hmm. Because it is too slow. And, like, the aggressive red four drops are just so insane. Like, I would much rather I have... Mean, I, I think Flame Dunk Kavu is one of those aggressive red four drops. No, because it, like, it doesn't have haste. Like, it's no Hellrider, it's no Hero of Oxid Ridge. Sure, but even if it sits on the bronze-level podium of those cards, I'm not complaining. But I'm just saying, like, this pack is very clearly really heavily slanted towards a lot of powerful control cards, or at the very least, mid-range cards. Like, you've got two Sphinxes, you've got the Abyss, you've got Kozilek, you've got... There's Force of Will, Kadama's Reach. There's a lot of cards that are very much going to push people into playing like slower, kind of plotting control decks. So it kind of puts me on the fence about Tangle Wire, because on the one hand, maybe that makes it more appealing, because sure, you know, all the other cards in this pack are going to probably indicate to other players they're going to play slower, more over, you know, Haymaker landing kind of decks, while at the same time, your chances of wheeling something out of this pack dwindle drastically. That's not true. I think you get Aether Vial back a fair amount of times. I think you might even... Yeah, I don't... Ah, you might get Incinerate. I don't know. I feel like the other Red Drafter would probably take Flood and Kabu over it. But I think that you get Aether Vial back a fair amount of times. You get Hells Hellion Crucible back a fair amount of times. At like worst, if, yeah. If you turn three Tangle Wire, turn four untap, look at your hand with nothing to do, I guess you could... Pump you, up. you could pump up the... You put, could put, put some pressure on, on yeah. So, like... You know, I, I I still I think like, I, I'm first. A, I think I'm first picking Abyss personally. I don't know. In a draft where like the people to your left end up taking, you know, consecrated Sphinx, cause like Sphinx of Jawar Isle, Kadama's Reach, Tangle Wire is like exactly where I want to be. 
Okay. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I mean, when we look but at this pack, it's you, like your it's... chances of, of wheeling something spectacular are lower, but you're also seeing a lot of cards that go into slower decks where Tangle Wire is going to punish them. It's like, instead of, like, you know, the concept of, like, cutting a color, you're, like, pushing the people downstream from you into slow control archetypes, and you're picking up on, like, being the fastest aggressive deck you can, and Tangle Wire is sweet in that deck, and sweet against all of those super slow, stupid control decks trying to play six drops and stuff. Yeah, it's interesting how if you take Tangle Wire out of this pack and then shipped 14 cards, uh, I'd be very interested. Like, it would be funny because to me it's like Force of Will, Sphinx, Sphinx, Abyss, Kozilek, Flame Tongue, Kavu. Uh, those are all things that um, they're going to slower decks, which is pretty funny to me. Um, I don't know, I still want to break off the Abyss here and I mean, like, if I take the Abyss, I'm happy to wheel a Sphinx, an Aether Vial. Even, like, Celestial Guild Mage kind of interacts with Abyss in a profitable way for a deck that can play Abyss. I mean, like, Abyss into Sphinx of Jor Isle is just ridiculous. But I don't, think, I don't know if you're going to table Sphinx of Jor Isle. Like, if I take the Abyss, I could pretty much guarantee that Tangle Wire is gone, Incinerate is gone, Flame Tongue Kavu is gone, Kadama's Reach Around is gone. Uh, Volcanic Island is gone. How many cards have I named? <laughs> One, two... All of them are gone somehow. I don't know. Uh, I mean... Yeah, it's funny though, if I take a biz, I'd rather see Sphinx of Arl come back than Consecrated Sphinx. Well, yeah. There's so many the, other... The combo. Yes, the Shroud versus the... The, the Abyss combo. Mm. Where, uh, where, one of those times where Shroud is superior to Hexproof. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, I just think like... This pack is just a giant pile of control cards, and I really want to be the aggressor, and Tangle Wire is always a great marquee card for an aggressive deck. Uh, that's fine. That's legitimate. I, I can understand why you're taking Tangle Wire from that argument. When I first looked at this pack, to me it was an easy throwaway card. It was not interested. To me this was a fight between some blue cards and the Abyss, and the Abyss was winning in my mind. If you take the Abyss and the Tangle Wire out of the equation, to me it's which blue card are you taking? So I have to weigh, weigh two Sphinxes against a Force of Will, which can be really hard. Uh, Consecrated Sphinx obviously plays really well with Force of Will. Sphinx of Isle just plays really well in general. Uh, regardless, we have, we have made clear picks here we can defend. And um, I, in this circumstance, I would like to be downwind of this pack. Yeah. I'd be very happy to take some of the things that were being left behind out of there. A lot of big haymakers. And I think that, like, that pack looks... Like, there are not a lot of packs that, like, change rapidly some in terms of, like, what their composition looks like. But that one, like, depending on what, like, the first two or three picks look like, downwind from that is, like, a completely different ballgame. I mean, again, you and I, we look at that pack... First of all, it's great because it's cute, because we can each take something different and... The drafts will go completely different directions for us. But also, if we're at the same table and we see these cards, we're very happy with each other. Because I'm going I'm to draft, I mean, probably black-white, but not exclusively. I'm going to draft some kind of black Abyss Control deck. And you're going to draft some kind of aggressive, probably red deck, but not necessarily. It's funny, like, you could kind of go off on a tangent about Tangle Wire. I don't think it's specifically a red card. I think that it's... It's obviously very good in red, because red has land destruction, red has more of the goblin guide type cards, but at the same time, it's excellent with the green decks that are going to out-token you, it's excellent in the white decks that have, you know, creature, creature, tangle wire, flicker wisp. I mean, I I like tangle wire in decks that have the lowest possible curve. Like, you know, in an ideal, like, tangle wire-y kind of deck, like, four is the absolute top of the curve. And like most of it is a two and one, and the best decks that are mostly two and one drops are red. Like red has just, I mean, like some of white's two drops are good, but none of them are as good as Goblin Guide. Yeah. And you can just like go so deep on always having like, you know, two power guy, another two power guy, or three power guy into Tangle Wire, and like that's such a, especially against like, you know, even decks with the Abyss or Sphinx of Dwar Isle or whatever, it's just so backbreaking. Like you just. It, it's just really punishing to effectively time walk someone after you put four power on the table. Yeah, I mean, that was what Tangle Wire used to be in Old Extended, uh, and that's why the red decks would jam four of it all the time. And I think 
outside of those decks, I think the Trinity decks were probably the second most likely decks to play Tanglewire in what w what was not mono blue Tinker era. I think that yeah. was really the time when uh, you saw it the most. Good pack. Yeah, I like that one. That was a different talking point than I wanted it to be, but it worked out uh, just fine. I really wish we could see how many people were in the room with us. It's kind of annoying that we can't right yeah, now. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know what's up with that either. Here we are for the East Coast crowd, and we have no idea if they're actually making a showing today or not. Instead, the, the room is, is populated with people we already know. We'll find out later. We will find out later. So, is, is the worst red one-drop Tattermunch Maniac, and if so, does any one or two drop in white trump him outside of Mom or Stoneforge? Trump him? I mean, Elite Vanguard's just a better Tattermunch Maniac, right? Tattermunch Maniac isn't even in the cube right now. I mean, not strictly. Probably because we've moved away from the jungle lion pouncing jaguar aspect of green. Uh, and Tyler Munch Maniac, it's it's such a... Oh, God. I, I really hate that card. Like, the fact that it's red-green hybrid is kind of like a tr like a trick. Because, like, you know... It would be a lot better if it was red-white hybrid, hybrid. I'll give you that. I'd be much more likely to put it... hybrid. Oh, yeah. Red-black hybrid or red-white hybrid, Tyler Munch Maniac has a shot. Red green hybrid, just the way green has been moving in cube. Green is very ever since we took away the jungle lion and friends. Yeah, which kind of moves into you know if you want to talk, we, we could uh, we could talk about the spoiler cards that we've seen uh, over the packs weekend at um, that point. What's the name of the the green green? Theme I don't three? remember his name off the top. Of my to head. the internet, deck. make it happen while yeah. we bring it up. Uh, it's something. Now we saw a a double green vanilla three three. No no it's upsides, a, no downsides. It's a beast, I think. Oh, it's a beast. That's a bit of an upside. It's a mild upside. Yeah, I mean, if we, if we ever bring in Contested Cliffs or bring back uh, Ravenous Bayloth. Colonian Tusker. It is a beast. Yeah. I think there was a better picture running around the internet than that one. But we can bring that one up for the people at home, just to... Although, it, it's really not hard to understand what we're talking about. Um, oh, I don't want to see the artwork. Horrible picture. It's a horrible... horrible. It, does look, it looks fine. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of, you know, talking about the card, it was kind of like, well, you know, I don't really think that's where green is right now. And it kind of brought up the conversation, like, well, what is it going to take for that vanilla 3-3 to make it into your cube? You know, if it was a green and a colorless, would that be good enough? Uh, and it made me kind of think, you know, maybe maybe this means, you know, more cards like this, maybe that means it's the end of the reign of Wild Mongrel. Maybe we're moving away from... I've been kind of an advocate of cutting Wild Mongrel for a while, and my argument for it is mostly that, like, the discarding cards to pump it over time has been less useful as a pump spell and more useful as an enabler for other things. Right, and, like, and some of those things I, have left. Like, we don't have blue-green madness cards in the cube. No, but, like... They're not strong enough for on like, their own to play. For, like, reanimator and stuff like that. Like, that's really the only place that I see... The Survival of the Fittest Recurring Nightmare deck, sure. which is already really good on its own. It doesn't need Wild Mongrel as but an But, like, enabler. that's kind of the only place that I see Mongrel succeeding. And if... All you're looking for is, like, a discard outlet. Like, there are better ones than just Mongrel. I mean, he's kind of like... You know, maybe this is the too obvious of a conclusion. He's kind of like the poor man's Psychotog in the way where it's, like, that a, a tap. Poor, that is a poor-ass <laughs> man's Psychotog. Well, no, think about it. With the green decks, or the aggressive decks in general, sure, you're going to be applying more pressure than attack for one, attack for one, attack for one, attack for 17. Instead, you're going to be, like, attack, you know, attack with Wild Mongrel, no blocks, all right, take two. Attack for a while, mongrel, no blocks, sorry, take two. You know, mix and repeat, and eventually it's like, how many cards in your hand? Five. Well, I'm at nine. I don't know if I want to block him now. Maybe I have to block him. It's funny, I've actually been thinking, you know, every time a new set is starts looming on the horizon, you know, you see the, the trickles of spoilers. There's the Rorik Thar, the Unbound. Do you see that guy from Dragon's Gate? Or Dragon's Maze, or whatever. Is that the... Is he... Is he Gruul? Is he yeah, the Yeah, he's one? the Gruul, the 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh... So for, uh... Four colorless, a red, and a green mana, you get a 6-6 six, six Vigilance Reach, who must attack every turn if able, and whenever any player casts a non-creature spell, he's gonna deal six damage to that player, which is pretty sweet. I mean, that's not bad. It doesn't have Trample, which makes me a very sad panda. No, I think the point of this card, and what I would really like something like this to do, is if you sized it down, it becomes a real threat. Yeah. The fact that it's so big... If that was like a 3-3 three, three for 3? I mean, if, again, if you just shrunk all the numbers down on this card, yeah. it would be, be a lot better, better, because it would be an aggressive creature. The fact that it's so big, that's kind of one of those things where it's, it's like a strange... 
it's, extra shields up kind of maneuver against Wraths in the end game, which is just it, too slow and not is, consistent. What enough. I do like about it is that um, you play it, and if they want to kill it, they he they he gets he just jumps them. Like yeah, but he has to attack every like the 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 part that makes it fair is that he attacks every turn. So your opponent has a three three and a four four. Sure. He has to just swing into them. Yeah. But it's not even like your opponent has to lay... You're playing red, so you can theoretically deal with that, and you're probably more... So you're going to, like, lightning bolt their 3-3, take 6 to the face, so your guy... You're probably in a better shape to take the damage than they are, ideally, in, like, a a red deck. Right. Uh, Ultimately, this card to me boils down to it's too big. Anyway, I I agree. This is kind of a non-secondary. What I was trying to get at is that when new sets are on the horizon and the spoiler season kind of starts... One of the things I always do is start thinking about um, cube cards that I want. Okay. Not yes, necessarily. Yes. Not necessarily like the new ones, like every spoiler card, like oh I want that, I want that. But like older cards, other stuff that's on the bench, stuff that we haven't thought about or whatever. And I'm still kind of like compiling my list of 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 maybes. Right. But um, one of them would be a wild mongrel uh, swap for another uh, two mana green creature. Okay. Uh, what do you think about? Um, Scrib Ranger. It's very tricky. It is super tricky. But I'm failing to see what it's doing that's really positive. It's being really, really tricky. To what end? It, what, what's it untapping other than, like, Raffellos? That's a pretty sweet one. I mean, even just, like... A guy that needs no help already, yeah. <laughs> like, it's sweet in, like, cases of if you don't have land drops. Like, if you have, like, a land war elves and you don't have a forest, or you have a land to play, you can tap your land where else for mana, tap your forest for mana, return your land, untap your land where else, replay your land. Yeah. So effectively generate two mana with that just, guy. Just like Query and Ranger. Yeah. Or you could add Query and Ranger for that exact reason. But Script Ranger flies and has Pearl Blue and Flash. Yeah. And I'm still looking sweet. for, like, where that's really good. Flying green is kind of sweet. Slap a Rancor on that bad boy. It's just so weird. I mean, when, when evaluating uh, green two drops... Which there aren't a super large abundance of. And when we move over to the Skeleton Cube um, side of this, it'll make more sense because we're going to talk about the mana curve is really important in Skeleton Cube because there are so few cards. Um, green, right now in Cube, is the best at going right from one to three. And having a two drop means that that two drop really has to do something different. It has to be Fauna Shaman. It has to be Strangle Root Geist because it's going to undie and or have haste, which is really good. Two drops in green have to be Tarmogoyf. They have to really be five sixes. They don't have to be two twos. Um, that's why, to me, looking at this new... What is it? Colonian Beast or whatever? Something like that. Colonian something. Um, just being a 3-3 three, three for two, it's just like, well, you know, that's not really where... Or Tusker. Yeah. It's a Tusker. Colonian Tusker. This isn't really where green is attacking from right now. You know, maybe if there are enough of these cards in the future, we revert back. We start to pull out the redundant Land War Elves. We bring back in... The, uh, the Jungle Lion, the Pouncing Jaguar, the Garrix Companion, Gaz add Ogre. this guy, Gazban Ogre, Ogre. Or not Jack- Wild, Wild Dogs. Dogs. That's the one. Um, because, you know, slowly over time we moved away from that. And I think, you know, losing things like Albino Troll really was the end of that kind of aggressive green era where green went like, oh, still, we can attack, we can have friends. We're just going to, you know, every time we pair up with red, it's more likely we're going to go from one to three, four to five. We're not going to go one drop, two drop, three drop like aggressive red decks, aggressive white decks, or aggressive black decks would do. Yeah. So, that being said, you know, Tusker by himself is really underwhelming. Like, yeah, he's ahead of the curve. Like, yeah, he's a really good card. But I'm not looking at him being like, yeah, this is the direction I really want to go with green creatures in my cube right now. Um, But it does bring up the conversation about Wild Mongrel. What do we do with that guy? And it's just like, I don't know. I just don't feel that, like, Wild Mongrel's doing much of anything these days. Like, he rarely sees... He rarely makes the cut, even in most green decks. If I'm playing a green aggressive deck, if I'm playing... Yeah, really, we're talking, like, green, white, green, red. Well, even green, blue a little bit. But, again... Not as much. Again, like, he is not a first run. Like, I don't want to be playing Wild Mongrel. If I'm playing Wild Mongrel, even in an aggressive deck, I feel like I've done poorly. Like, cards are too good now. Discarding cards for plus one, plus one is so horrible value across the table because cards are way too good. And it's important to point out that as Cube has evolved in the last three or four years, Black has felt so needed to find ways to deal with Black creatures. It's not like um, the other kind of shroud shield that Mongrel used to have. We're going to be like, oh, he's Black. Can't gas him. Can't tear him. Yeah. Game off, boys. 
Uh, now, now that we live in a world of Obsidat and other aggressive black creatures that we hope are going to be good enough to have to fight, that is not kind of the extra bonus mode that Mongrel used to have in um, limited formats prior. Yeah. And I mean, like, even in cube, you know, go for the throat, you know, the non-conditional rule that don't that just doesn't care. That's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. That you've, you've named it. Uh, that was a bit of a tangent. I don't really remember how we got off on the side of Wild Mongrel, but... Oh, we were talking about the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, yeah. I don't remember how we brought up that guy either. I don't know. Skeleton Cube, though. <laughs> Skeleton Cube is the uh, the first topic that we... I, I worked long and hard over the weekend on this, because, again, I think the number one thing I get asked from people about Cube is, how do I get started? It's such an expensive barrier to get into. I don't necessarily know somebody in my playgroup already owns one. We're interested in doing it. How do we get started? Uh, and so, you know, many moons ago, back... Uh, actually published something back in the February of 2009. It was a skeleton cube list, which is really fun to look at. We may bring that up later on the show just to kind of see how far we've come. Um, but we have a skeleton cube list that we've already put on the blog. So if you go to ekamon.blogspot.com and I'll put the link which, in the which ek, ek will link for the live components. Um, skeleton cube, don't even try if you don't have fetch lands, shock lands, and ABU duels. Bam. That is kind of an over-the-top statement. I don't I don't think that's 100% true. When I made the one in 2009, we only had five fetch lands, and we just used the rab duels, and we didn't use the uh, original duels. But as we'll get into the building it and how much it would cost level of it, you will see that lands are still stupidly expensive. Yes. So, that being said, Ek will we'll wave goodbye to the live audience, because we're going to go to the spreadsheet mode here, briefly. And talk about the Skeleton Cube 2013 edition. Now, the Skeleton Cube is 360 cards. That means you have enough for eight drafters drafting three packs of 15 at 45 cards. Uh, yeah, there's no LD in it, which you may notice. LD is kind of a uh, a rich man's game. <laughs> which is funny, because the red is by far the cheapest color. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, but yes. Uh, so for white... Black and red, the breakdown is 25 creatures, 25 spells. For blue and green, we have the inverse where it's uh, 30 spells for green, 20 creatures, sorry, 30 spells for blue, 20 creatures for blue, 30 creatures for green, 20 spells for green. If we come down, down into the more generic areas, uh, multicolor or artifacts, we just have 40 artifacts. Um, we're trying to keep the equipment to a minimum. We I've talked in previous threads about a percentage of your artifacts that should be equipment, and that color palette really got out of control. That is a weird color. Yeah. Uh, multicolor cards, we just have three from each guild. Uh, there's no three color or five color or four color cards in there. And then finally on the lands, we just have 40 lands with an emphasis on mana fixing. Because again, you want to be able to play your spells. You know, In a limited format, you want to have fun, uh, and you can't have fun if you're not playing your spells. So for a skeleton cube... We really want everyone to be able to cast their stuff. So most of the lands are just there for fixing. We have the Tri-Lands from Shards. We have the Man Lands from World Wake. We have the Ravnica Duels. We have the 10 Sack Lands. And then under the Specialty Land side, we have one land from each individual color that's a special ability. Volrath Stronghold, Treetop Village, Caracas, Gitu Encampment, and Sheldock Isle. Uh, I do think you need to limit equipment. It can be important. If you just have too much equipment, it's just over the top. And when we get to the artifact section, we go section by section, we'll talk about how that kind of happened. So, that's kind of how you have it. The only other real limitations I put on it was I didn't want any cards that cost over $100 a piece, which wasn't too difficult. Although, again, I kind of tried to reference the 09 list a little bit more. Like, you could you could swap out Wimbrisk Heights for Caracas to save money uh, in that regard. I just love Caracas with Vendillion Click and... Mangara, obviously. Manga well, I don't think Mangara made the, it, the white side. There's no way he made I, the white side. It's just not enough guys. Yeah. Um, so there are, there are some other kind of edits you can make to make it cheaper. Again, I, we're trying to reference the old list when a lot of these cards were a lot cheaper. It was a little awkward. So, you know, it was kind of that distinction where it's like, well, you got to have Jace. But I don't think you have to have Tarmogoyf. So that was, that was a conscious decision that was made for making the list. How much is Jace these days? He's a hundred bucks. Oh, okay. He's he's kind of kind of flatlined at a hundred. No, he hasn't exactly flatlined. I mean, to talk about the, the the finance side of Jace, Jace has gone beyond being a magic card. Yeah. Jace is like 
the it thing of magic. Like, when casual players sit around and talk about magic cards, it's like, Jace is so broken, so broken. It's so good. It's like this thing that, you know, we'll never get to play with. It's it's kind of like the the lotus of the 21st century of magic. I'll come out and say it. I think that's that strong. Uh, graphic warning I could get behind. Sort of body and mind. Mill 10 is just not fun. We sure. intentionally had to cut the Mill 10 effects like Jace Memory Adept. Yeah. Um, sort of body and mind. Because they create really unfun, like, mini games. Yeah, I mean, in a little bit of the cube coverage I saw from the mocks last weekend, uh, it was very clear that um, the game just devolved super fast when there was a sort of body and mind involved. I think that um, there was one where it was like, oh, you know, he's still, your opponent's still at 8 life, he could get his way out of this, he's need to find an answer. It's like, oh no, he has one card left in his library, it's game over. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, that's kind of it. We also, we limited the number of Planeswalkers. Uh, planeswalkers also can just get expensive, or they can kind of like create too many sub games and have the game kind of devolve to being a sub games around them. I also think like in a smaller cube, especially one that's balanced a little bit more around affordability, uh, just by the nature of that, your power level is going to be lower. Mm -hmm. And planeswalkers, you know, even in a powered cube, are some of the most powerful effects. So they can really run away with games if the power level of a lot of the other cards is gone. So in the efforts of kind of flattening out the power curve to some degree and making it a little more balanced and fun so games aren't super degenerate all the time. Yeah, I'm kind of talking to the end of where power level is and power versus non-power. In the Skeleton Cube, it's definitely a no-power arena. Um, the fast mana is definitely um, restricted, and we try to, you know, there's no mana vault, but there's Monolith, there's no... Moxes, no. There's no mana vault. No mana vault, no mana crypt, any of that kind of stuff. So again, this is a much more fair environment. I mean, sure, there is a DT. Sure, there's a mind twist. Sure, there's a there's no mana drain. There is no no. But um, so it's, it's a much cleaner cleaner format. Well, so let's just start right up. We got pulled up here. Let's start with what we got in white. And uh, yeah. So you want to talk about what you were thinking? So again, with only 360 cards and only 25 on each, you really need to make sure that there are draftable archetypes there. So you want to have a, a good number of aggressive white creatures. You want to make sure that you have um, utility guys that aren't don't cost a million mana. But we want to support as many archetypes as possible. And I think the, the easiest way to just look at the spreadsheet and understand that is with something like Reanimator. Where it's like, well, we don't want a bunch of guys that cost a million mana, especially if there's so few creatures. Like, if I'm going to go to draft white and there's six creatures that cost seven or more mana... I'm not to have no chance of being able to, you know, get enough guys to have a aggressive or even mid range white deck. So right. If if eight of your white creatures, eight of your twenty five white creatures are unplayable in half, at least half of the white decks, it's pretty bad. Yeah. So you know we lose things like Iona, um, but we try to keep you know Elish Nor Angel Serenity when they hit the board, they should be really good. And then there's a Chroma is kind of that reanimator target where it's got protection from things. Um. So that's just kind of the, the general outline if you look at white on the creature side. And, and this kind of this is a good example of just how each color kind of broke down. And then on the um, spell side, you want to have to make sure you have a few wraths, not too many wraths. You want to make sure you have token generators to the right, at the right casting costs and make sure that they're, they're good. Yeah, I remember when you originally sent me this list, uh, one of the cards that was in it, because um, I was just looking at it kind of like you know, put my own opinion on it or commentary. And one of the cards that was in the original list was um, White Sun Zenith. And I think that while that's a card that's fine in normal queue or in powered queue, because there's so much less like aggressive fast mana and like you know, there's no mana vault, there's no lotus, there's no you're not going as huge with your artifact mana, it becomes a much worse spell in a in a fairer queue, you know. You'll be lucky to get two or three uh, cats out of it tops, whereas like in Power Cube, a lot of times it's getting cast for four, five, even six. I think when you bring the power level down, there's there are opportunities to have those more long out, long drawn out control games. Um, I, I don't think White Sun Zenith is is just an auto disinclude in a 360 skeleton card list, but I wanted more versatility, so we ended up changing it to Increasing Devotion. Um, a control deck can still get a lot of power out of Increasing Devotion, but an aggressive deck it can it can be that top end. It can do a lot over there as well. So, yeah, that's kind of the philosophies that go into white um, and the explanation there. Let's now, move on to... But before we just break color by color, I do want to talk about um, 
when building a cube, costs are prohibited. Yes. And that is the biggest hurdle. Again, when when I started cubing, I went through my collection and I ended up with a stack of cards on my desk that was probably half to two thirds of the way there. And then it was like this fun little sub game where it's like, okay, well now we go to F and M, let's like trade for this stuff or let's, you know, rally our forces and find the things we need to put this thing together and then, you know, make one last final order from Troll and Toad and get everything we need. Um, so in a lot of, for a lot of people who are starting, that system really works. You know, when I started Cube, there weren't that many resources out there to draw from, but I took a list, I kind of edited a little bit for what I wanted, and then I just got to have a little checklist. And it was like a little game for a few weeks where we were going around, play, going around to Magic events and stores and, and finding stuff um, before we actually got to play with it. That being said, it's still not super cheap. And I wanted to know, you know, again, kind of having that ceiling, that $100 ceiling, how much it would cost to build this thing today if you own no magic cards. So I went ahead, did the math, put it all together. Um, if everyone out there wants to make a guess, everyone in the live chat, so we can have some, some yeah, interesting... We'll, we'll, take your, we'll take your guesses now, if you would like to. Yeah, if you would think how much it would cost to put together a skeleton cube. Now remember, um, nothing over $100... Jace is the most expensive card, maybe Caracas. Uh, there's no original dual lands. There are all of the fetch lands, which I was kind of surprised to see how much they've inflated uh, so much there. But uh, you've got Rav duels, which are nice and low right now, since they're everywhere. Um, but any, any guesses from the chat window? We have an even 2,000. We have a, we have a bet of even 2,000. Looks like we have a lot of people attempting to bid and failing somehow. <laughs> Not really bidding, I guess you're guessing. Oh, the chat blocks dollar signs? Oh, okay, well, don't use dollar signs. Or, yeah. you know, you could guess in yen, I can convert that. <laughs> Canadian dollars. <laughs> Gallons of maple syrup. We got 600, 1,500, 1,500. So we have a 2,600, what is it, 600, 600 and 1,500. 1,500. And a lot of uh, chat block type info. Yeah. Okay. Or Canadian, we're going to have a bet in Canadian dollars as well. That was a bid. All right. So, <laughs> so in, in reality. One dollar. We're going Price is Right style. Ah, Price is Right style. I like, I like it. I like it. Unfortunately, you will not win anything. Uh, with a correct guess. I, I like the strategy behind it. Yo, right? I applaud the strategy, the $1 strategy. Okay. So... so let's move over to skeleton list cube totals. Drum roll, please. I'm surprised by this. If you were to buy all of these cards, again, these are English near mint. Now, it could be... It's just the lowest version, you know, if let's say it's uh, Urza's Rage from Invasion versus Urza's Rage from Frexy versus Coalition, right. and that one is, you know, a dollar fifty as opposed to two dollars for the Invasion one. Uh, it comes out to just under $2,700, uh, which is a bit of a surprise to me as I was calculating it, putting it all together. Now, again, these are for near mint prices, though, so you had theoretically try and like track down well yeah again you had to, i kind of had to have a, a jumping point somewhere i couldn't be like oh well you know i'm just gonna go around to dealers and websites and i'm only gonna buy the all their hp <laughs> stuff right just so i can have it um you know with, with that kind of thing it's it's almost like that why don't you just print it off a printer i don't yeah maybe i don't i don't really know so again if you were to show up with with nothing but cash in hand to try to build this skeleton list we're putting up today it would cost you uh, $2,683.50. Thank God the shipping's free. Uh, also, big shout out to Red for keeping the total price down as much as possible. Yeah, and, and really bringing the average and, down. Uh, and eat a dick lands. Yeah. Uh, while Jesus. only being 40 of the 360 cards in cube, there are more you are accumulating for more than 27% of the entire price to put this thing together. So, but I think that, you know... The land section is the one with the most redundancy in terms of, like, you could play, like, say, the M10 duels instead of other things. Or you could, like... Like, there's a lot more, like, wiggle room in terms of... Yeah, I mean, you do... You lose a bit of an integrity with the fetch lands and the dual lands if you lose those. Losing the tri lands... Like, I I tried to find most of the really cheap stuff. Granted, you know, you could make a quick Caracas swap. You could turn a $100 card into, like, a $2 card and... Actually... With Battalion, I think Windbrisk Heights is more than that nowadays. But yeah. uh, 
you can cut some corners here. My point is that it's still, you know, it's, it can be expensive to come from nowhere. So I really enjoyed the scavenger hunt part when we first built the cube and put everything together. Yeah. And this was just a bit of a shocker number. I felt like I had to share how much this really was. was I, I was surprised at the end of the day. Yeah. So everybody hit the casino gaming tables now. You know, only start, only start only, it up. only Eck could uh, endorse that, as he is one of the few people I've ever seen to hit a bad beat jackpot in my entire life. That's true. I mean, the only one I was ever at the same table for. I know you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so back to the official list. Let's move on to blue here. Um, I don't really. So creatures are really hard in blue already, uh, and blue is hard hardest color for a cube in general because you want to play with so many sweet cards and you don't get to. Uh, figure out which finishers you wanted was really difficult. Figuring out like what creatures you wanted was really hard. You want again, there's no chance of having any kind of aggressive stuff. I really like that Lone Revenant made the cut. Yeah, I thought that guy was really important to have because with all these blue control decks that are just strictly control decks, having a hexproof guy to be able to win the game with that guy is just awesome. I don't know if I go as far as awesome. I love that guy. I mean, he's not a hot dog, but he's still really good. Uh, so yeah, he made the list. I mean, there's a good number of clones. The three drops in blue are really key to kind of keep pressure off of you with Calcite Snapper, Fettergeist, and Serendipafree. And thanks, Serendipafree, for being printed and revised to really help us out. There's a Tinker in there. You can't have a cube without a Tinker. That's why you have to have Inkwell Leviathan. And he's a good reanimator. He's pretty good in reanimator, yeah. He's serving double duty. Which is important, because, again, you don't want... In a skeleton cube like this, you don't want uh, outliers. You don't want niche cards. You don't want corner cards. And, again, one of the bonuses of the skeleton list is, as you slowly expand upon it and add things to it, you get to farm out those other strategies. But initially, you're going to want to have the very core of the colors, the very primal, almost, things that they do. Um, and that's going to be real important when we get to the you make the card portion and talking about the wheel and where things are important. I haven't had good experiences with Lone Revenant props if the guy does work. He does work. And on the spell side, keeping um, in line with that is really key as well. I am a little disappointed we didn't get to add things like spell pierce because there just isn't room. But being able to stay in the game early as the blue mage is important. So you want the condescends, the force spikes, the, the dazes, the repeals, those kind of things is really important. Oh, I need to move ancestral vision down to zero CMC. Typo. Type. Oh. We'll I mean, like, that. yeah. The, the thing about blue is, like, Blue spells are so good, like, you could just pick 30 of them almost out of a hat, it seems like. As long as they have the right CMC. Yeah. Like, as long as you have the curve okay, like, it's fine. I mean, it's another example of why blue will never be an aggressive color in cube, because look at how, look at the breakdown of its creatures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's kind of, like, little chunks of two, three, four, fives. It's not really, like, a flow. Also, like, two power across the board here, like... Gladiator, Archmage, Vitzer. Is it your four and five mana two power guys? Yeah, okay, lay off. They're so tricky. Blue is so tricky. You can do whatever it wants. All right, so black. And now, uh, coming into black, those that are more familiar with the cube that we run, uh, you will notice the lack of land destruction here. Tier. But you will notice the reintegration of the hybrid mana color cards into a particular color. So you get a bit of a cheat there. You know, you get Deathrite Shaman in the black side, but it gives you a little more uh, work around. So black seems like the old, these are pretty explanatory to themselves, but you've got uh, your aggressive zombies. You've got some really big, you've got the 187 creatures, which are really key. You, you really need those. Black puts together a pretty sweet living death deck in this list. Yeah, you know, the more I was crafting the skeleton cube, the more I kind of wanted us to just take the cube, pare it down to the skeleton cube, and run it for a little while, just so we could make sure that not only is everything just, you know, hunky-dory, but to kind of see how different things are and how they play out. Because I think, I think that would be a lot of fun. And again, as cube builders and cube owners, you have the opportunity to kind of just you know mess with your own world and kind of create sub-games and sub-cubes right. in your cube. Like, you know, I mean, I see plenty of lists that go, you know, on black, you know, go like the heavy, like, Swamps Matter, and like the heavier, you know, Death Cloud and Mutilate and, you know, the stuff that's really, like, mono-black cards. And, like, a lot of people really like those, other people hate them, you know. But that's the nice thing. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, and we stay away from a lot of that triple black action. 
I mean, you know, there's a Gross Messenger, but there's no Necro. There's, <laughs> there's, there's no uh, Sinkhole, you know. We, we do have... Uh, there's no him to Torak either, which might be a bit of a crime. Yeah, that's kind of... That's got to be a mistake. <laughs> Is that a typo? <laughs> that's probably a typo. <laughs> uh, also not, you know... Blue, sorry, black is the first color to not kind of max out on its planeswalkers either. There's, yeah. There's just a lily. Which is like one of the best planeswalkers, though. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, I, black I, has the problem of most of its planeswalkers being god awful. Right, and I think that's a conversation for another day. There are people out there that are huge fans of um, Liliana Vess, and I am not one of those people. Ugh. So slow. Him could be in there. Bone Shredder, I'm kind of indifferent towards because we've got Necrotal, Skin Render, Predatory Night Stalker, and Shriek Maw already, and we already had three casting cost creatures that I felt were important. Um, something like Stronghold Rats kind of brings a different angle and a different kind of tool to black that just having another Bone Shredder wouldn't have done. So I, I felt that was important. Yeah. I mean, and black still got its aggressive staff, you know, it seems fine. Let's go over to red then, also known as the the cheap or poor man's color in Q. So red's, I mean, pretty standard looking. Did you just close the Twitch window? No, it's fine. Okay, I just didn't. Relax. We lost our chat window. Uh, yeah, red red is um, another. It seems like it's very easy to construct in a skeleton cube, but at the same time, I think it can be very difficult because there are so many small guys you want to put in the cube and so many kind of top end four or five mana guys you want to put in the cube and you have to be very picky about how much of each you have so you got you know your your figure your goblin guy your jackal pup uh you've got your chain walker cargan dragon lord you know lightning mauler action going on and then you've got kiki jiki siege gang zealous conscripts thunder Maw hellkite uh, which are all very key. So kind of fitting in the middles there. And fours are also really huge for red, as we've talked about before. Uh, those those colors can go real deep on the things that they can do. So. Uh, and then you want a bunch of burn spells on the spell side. But you add up a, you add a little bit of diversity with uh, Jockle Hops, Wildfire, and Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fine to have, you know, kind of the big red deck. As, uh, in addition to the little red deck, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, you got you, you got the Greater Gargadon in there as the uh, as the last kind of like big CC creature in red. There's not room for Begotten Hillkites. No. And um, in chat, someone's saying that there's a bunch of red two drops that we're missing. I feel like I mean, there's a bunch of everything that's good that we're missing. Oh yeah, red I mean, creatures I, are very strong. I, I don't think it's necessarily like. You know, we're like it, you just have to make tough decisions because we're we're so limited in space, and that's really why our cube isn't 360 cards and it's 700 cards is because we like playing with we want to play all the stuff, all of the things. There are 300 360 cards in the skeleton cube just as a as a refresher. So let's come on down to green. Now green was a bit of a tough one because green is where you want all those CMC seven or more creatures. You want. You hit big, because you want to play Tooth and Nail, you want to play Natural Order, you want there to be that fun big stuff that you can just jam out there and have fun with, but at the same time, by adding all of those into your cube, there's not a lot of room for everything else at the bottom. No, no, yo, no Yosai. No. No Yosai. I don't, that, that's a white card, we've we're long past white. Uh, so again, with green it's tough, you want all that big stuff, you want plenty of uh, one casting cost ramp guys. Uh, and there's a lot of tools, you know, again with the four drop. Just like red, there's so many utility things you can do with green at the four spot. You got the haste avenge vine, you've got the card advantage oracle moldia. You have the life gaining obstinate bailoth, which is really important because there's so fewer opportunities to have life gain effects against the red decks in a skeleton cube. And you have one of my favorite dudes, Master of the Wild Hunt. Master of the Wild Hunt, that card. Love that guy. For some reason, Eck always drafts decks that that card just beats up on. Yeah. So you need to draft it. I mean, I, I think uh, X drafts, anytime he sees a Batter Skull or a Master of the Wild Hunt, he just has to take them. Those cards have my number. And if it's wearing... If a, ma if a Master of the Wild Hunt is wearing a Batter Skull... You've okay. already scooped. It's game yeah, over. Don't even, don't even go there. But I mean, like... Well, no Kadama's Reach because we have Cultivate. You only have room for one. Yeah, you don't necessarily need the same level of redundancy because the cube is smaller. I mean, this is a 360-card list. If 
you have an eight-man draft, all of these cards are going to see play in every single draft. Like, it uses exactly all of them. So, you don't necessarily need the same level of redundancy that you do for, like, say, a 700. Exactly. I don't. I didn't want to double up on effects that were exactly the same. For example, like, we could have put in Finhorn Elves, but we didn't because it would just be another Llanowar Elves. And in the 360-card cube, there's no reason to have to have that redundancy. Uh, there's no effect that is so key for a color. It has to happen twice. And, you know, cubes all... To me, it's still about the one-ofs. It's about the, the unique experiences. Yeah. Um, like, functional reprints are... And, and Cultivate is just straight-up cheaper than Kadama's Reach. So, there's that to factor in as right. well. Right. Save seven cents or whatever. <laughs> um, like, on Green's Planeswalkers... Uh, first of all, there's only 20 spells. Three of those 20 spells are Garrick's. Yeah. <laughs> He's occupying a pretty large percentage of Green. Um, Greens, again, you know, I don't know how self-explanatory or not self-explanatory these things may or may not feel, but we're just trying to take that 700-card list, size it down proportionally, and still have a lot of the same feelings. So, so yeah. And we like Tooth and Nail, we like, uh, we like Natural. We want those got Polliner in there, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. So, Artifacts. The Dead Bridge Goliath has been great for us. I love Dead Bridge Goliath. I think that's exactly the kind of effect that Green needs and wants. Coming back to the Colonian Tusker um, Wild Mongrel Green's Color Identity conversation I think it's really important to give them nice big Juzambijin style fatties that also do other things and I think in the design of the what's the name of that mechanic? Scavenge, Scavenge mechanic uh, it's very key like so, it's it's kind of like a it's like virtual green card advantage. Exactly. Like you have like this five five four, which is already pretty good, and then like it turns into like a late game. All of a sudden, sweet. your land war elf is a six six. Yeah, like it's it's very good. It's kind of like it's kind of like it has on Earth. It's kind of like it has something very similar, or you can go real deep on it. In the seven hundred card cube, you can put it on a spike weaver against a white red opponent or whatever. WTF? No prime evil titan. You mean the worst titan? Yeah, I mean, who's good in this cube would be searching for the most underwhelming lands ever? Yeah, like, Primeval Titan hasn't been in our cube in a long time intentionally because it doesn't do anything sweet. Second worst Titan still. Second worst question mark. What's wor what Titan is worse than Primeval? I would imagine the argument would be to Frost Titan, but I don't know if that's a very good argument. It's like blue removal. Yeah, it's like, also, like, in the color that's the most protected. Frost Titan is sweet. I disagree with Kenny on this. I, I don't want to use extremes like sweet and garbage. I will say that Frost Titan is an excellent role player, and as much, I think for a really long time, we only went, ran white, red, black in cube for Titans. Eventually I came around to blue, and I saw more of how it fit into the color than looking it in a vacuum and evaluating its power level. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's still in the cube and does really well when you cast it. I, there are very few games... And the Moto Cube's a little bit different. It's, it's really good in the Moto Cube. Uh, but in our cube, laying that guy down is very good. I mean, I, I think, you know, bringing the conversation back to just Primeval Titan in general, uh, you... Eh, eh, step, step one, have really good lands in your deck. Step two, don't draw them draw Primeval Titan. Step three, cast Primeval Titan, have it resolve. Search for lands that do really good stuff. Step four, Prophet? Like, it's it's so much harder to get immediate value other than just the ramp effect out of Primeval Titan. Like, there's just you know, there's not like, you can't make Valakut work in cube. You know, you can't there's, I mean, and, and in this list, there's not even like barbarian ring. In the know. skeleton cube list, there is not barbarian right. ring. So, it's but, you know, like, in the, the seven hundred card cube, there's a lot of utility. You know, as we add the um, Zendikar Dark Ascension, as we have kind of slowly integrated more of those, especially the the green based ones. There was a time where I, uh, I had Grim Backwoods in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are better cards, and you know, getting a Wolf Run, getting a Township with Titan, is a huge game. So, you know, those do things, but I just do, it doesn't happen enough for me. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it just... With the lands that are currently in cube, 
I've never I would never be like super stoked to go get two of them to base expanded for. Like Federal Thing to me is like a six six with trample that gets you some mana, which is okay. Like he's mostly just a six six trample, which is fine, but it's not like something that I'm really writing home about. Moving, can anyone link me to the list? That's probably the last thing you copy pasted, right, Eck? You can just put that back in there? I hope so. It's either that or like an Eck dick pick. Right. There we go. Uh, okay. Moving down to artifacts, which, uh, looking at the artifact section will help explain why the Aldra- Aldrazi are in cube outside of the fact you can tooth and nail for them. Wait, is there a Raphaelos in green? I think yes. we put a Raphael. Yeah, okay. That was one of the more expensive cards that I didn't really want to include, but I was like, it's too good not to include. It's too good. Yeah. Um, so we have you have hated beast within how could you hate beast within it kills everything Kenny's got some weird opinions on Kenny plays with people in Reno apparently he just runs over them all day with tangle wire yeah I mean who doesn't tangle wire run over I don't know but I know that uh, beast withinning my tangle wire when it's about to die feels pretty good oh that's 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 dirty alright so artifact section so we talked about briefly about the percentage on equipment, uh, not having sword of body in mind. It even feels kind of dirty in the skeleton cube to have the other four swords. They feel like they're just taking up valuable space. But they're so good. All of them are... Like, the only one that I could see... Like, I could see cutting light and shadow, maybe. I could see cutting I, light and shadow. I could see maybe cutting war and peace. Oh, yeah, there are so few life gain effects, and there are so few pro-red effects in a skeleton cube. I think war and peace is pretty important. Yeah. But, like, uh, Fire Eyes and Feast of Him are just so... Insane. Yeah, they're not so, yeah. yeah. And obviously all the cards are good. They're in a 360-card cube. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of... we got a lot of mana rocks. We've got a lot of the two mana rocks, the... I think pretty much all of them. I didn't, I didn't really skimp on the two mana ones. The three mana ones, we went for the two big fixers with Coalition Relic and Chromatic Lantern. And we have the Basalt Monolith and Thran Dynamo kind of combo to get big for when people want to get big which I think is really cool and pretty key. I think there are definitely some hidden gems in the artifacts section. Oh, no signets. No signets. Signets make magic no fun, especially when we're talking about trying to ever cast two and three drops ever. Um, I think cards like Precursor Golem and Masticor are grossly underrated in what they actually do in cube, and they are very good. So I will agree with one of those, <laughs> but not both. And you are going to agree... With the non-crowd favorite, are you? I, I think Eck would rather have a Masticor in his deck than a Precursor Golem. One hundred percent of the time. <laughs> you just you're just getting blown out with your Precursor Golem too many times. <laughs> you know, this it's one just, is like, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me like eighteen times. Like <laughs> I'm not. You don't get fooled again. You've had a bad. You've had a bad thirty day run with Precursor Golem. I've had a bad like thirty month run. That card has never been good. If you uh, come. Be real, son. If you were playing it for that long and it wasn't working for you, you wouldn't put it in your deck. You wouldn't be drafting it. The problem with Signets... So, there's a question in chat about Signets being the scapegoat for what's wrong with Magic. It's not that Signets are what's wrong with Magic. The problem with Signets is that they don't... They What they're intended to do and what they actually do in a cube setting are completely different. What happens in cube settings is that everyone just takes every signet the moment they see it, regardless of what the colors they end up playing. So every color has access, or everyone has access to a boatload of two mana rocks that might occasionally also fix them. So it really makes green way worse because green's fixing becomes less relevant. And you don't even have to target green so much as being the you know the bitch that's taking it. You can say every mid range to aggressive deck that now has to have their two and three drops immediately outclassed. In every blue deck that I would draft when Signets were in the cube, I would snap up, oh, Celestial Signet, Boros Signet, Golgari Signet, they're all mine. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what colors I'm playing, because it's like, oh, I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to Sphinx of Draw, I'll Consecrate Sphinx faster. I'm going to have those. And sure, like, you curved out beautifully, and you went two, three, four, but it's like, oh, I'm going to, like, wrath you on three now, and then I'm going to hit this, you know, five, five winning Shroud Shroud guy super early. Yeah, so it's just like, you know, Signet's just, like, they look cool, they look like mana fixing, but in reality they're just kind of like this lame thing that devalues yeah, three and, drops. Yeah, I just want to be clear, I'm not saying it makes green bad, I'm saying that it makes aggressive strategies worse, and I don't think you can argue that. Okay, 
Back on the artifact side, uh, I was also sad to have to include Gitae because it's like stupidly expensive. Still? Yeah, a year, a year, for like, Christ's sake. It's not about the pre-con, it's about the year of Grand Prix promos. Yeah. You know how many of those things we went through with Grand Prix promos? Ugh. I, would, I was like, oh yeah, it'll, whatever. Anyway. So, that's artifacts. Feel pretty good about that one. Down to multicolor. Uh, and multicolor, again, I feel, is where the maximum amount of debate comes in because the sections are so small. Right, it's kind of like the pick your favorites. Like, you only get three of each. So, like, they're all going to be good, but it's it's really... <laughs> Except like, for Blue Black, who has Shadow Mage Infiltrator chilled there. Yeah, he's fine. I, <laughs> I feel like of these 30 cards, Shadow Mage Infiltrator is clearly the worst card. That is not true. It's probably Simic Sky Swallower. Tell me more, Ak. Why don't you like Simic Sky Swallower? He's just really redundant. How? There are so many giant... Seven drop kind of finishers like that. He like I don't, I don't actually agree with Simic Sky Swallower taking that slot, especially because it's so tight. It's already so tight. Green, blue green is tight. Don't get me wrong; it's very tight. Like, uh, was that la, the, the blue blue black black guy that can clone things? He has hexproof. That's the the yeah. Lars guy. Is, he's all right, but he's blue blue black black. Which that is sucks. a hard. That is a tall order. I mean. Blue decks like lots of blue mana. Black decks like lots of black mana. If you were to make a skeleton cube, cut some expensive fetch lands maybe and run like the Shadowmore filters, I'd be a little more inclined I mean, to play that guy. Again, I think that, again, like, the idea behind this list is that this is a jumping off point. If you had, if you want a cube and you don't know where to start, this is a good place to start. However, because it's your, you know, it's ostensibly your cube. You can do whatever you want with it. Whoa, whoa! Someone's saying Bit Blast is the worst card. That whoa, is, whoa, whoa! 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 <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't think that's close. I need, I need, I need to lay down now. <laughs> um, there was a time, kids, where cascading was ridiculous. Uh, Void Slime might be the fringe worst, but that's not the point. The point is that these cards, in these two color combinations, uh, they kind of encapsulate what the colors want to do the two color combinations and they're very powerful uh, i feel like the ones that we picked to represent the multicolor cards here in cube for the skeleton cube were very key at that um it feels a little gross on black green that it's like kill stuff kill stuff slightly faster kill all the stuff yeah like uh, but that's what it does yeah i mean but again like you could really like if you wanted to say make black green more aggressive in, in your own in the in your own version of this, you could easily just go take two of those cards out and put in Lulteth Troll and Putrid Leech. Yeah. Or, you know, switch out. You know, if you... If it's funny to me, because the fourth card I would add to, to Black Green if we were to expand this color card, this combination by ten cards. The Frasca? Oh, no, it'd be Abrupt Decay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, Black black Green's redundancy in that is, is very funny. But, like, you, you, know, you can go a lot of different ways. You know, if you want more discard, you could put... Gerard's Verdict in White Black instead of a different color. That's, that's, I forgot. We've been kicking around that card. Or like Tide House Scholar even. Or, you know. Just if, you, I, gotta, I, gotta go back and, I gotta go back and reference that list of things that we may be changing for the next update. Because I, I don't remember if Gerard's Verdict is on there. We'll have to sit down and hand it I'm a pretty, I got a pretty good list coming together. We yeah. got some cool stuff coming up. I think we might want to I think we might want to put Bizarre Baghdad in. I think it might be time. Oh, that's bold. I don't know. Our, 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 our friends at... Uh, our friends at East West Draftcast are all about that card. Huh. Interesting. I mean, and as the oath slash oversight. This is kind of safe for another time. But uh, let us move on past multicolor. We'll go down to the bottom. So we, we, have, we have the lands, which is obviously the most controversial portion because, if you go back to the total side, it costs so effing much to put lands in your cube. Oh, uh, can't we just play with Mirage, dual lands, and... And, <laughs> and M10 buddy and invasion tap lands. <laughs> M10 buddy lands. I think, I think it was uh, Nationals 2002. I bought uh, a bunch of invasion ta Japanese invasion tap lands, thinking, think, like, thinking like I will need these. And then like they were like put in eighth edition or whatever or ninth or whatever whatever core set. Yeah. We lost pain lands and got those POSs. I and I was like, okay, well this will work for me. Like you could go. You could play panoramas too. You, you could play panoramas. mirage. You could play mirage sacklands. You could play the M10 buddy lands. I think you could get away with those. You could play, you know. So when building the cube list and talking about how expensive it is, if you were to just you want to go real deep, you could play the 
uh, Odyssey block filter lands. That isn't so much deep as it is terrible. Yeah. But it's also deep. Deep water catacombs. Uh, so, this is the section with the most flexibility, obviously. To me, it's about mana fixing, how much you offer it, what other things you offer it in lands, how you value it. Again, if you want... If you're the guy who's sitting at home today thinking like, you know what, I want to do this. I want to be the guy that comes to FNM, comes to our weekend events. When we scrub out of PTQs, nothing ever happens. Uh, you can all get together and draft this thing. I want to be the guy to champion it. Mana fixing can be very important for people having fun with your cube because they want to cast their spells. And if they can't cast their spells, they're not going to want to do it again. And they're not going to buy you a hamburger afterwards for bringing the cube. Uh, that being said, I like this shell because this shell has the most fixing for mana that isn't, you know, two grand worth of fixing. Right. Uh, you've got the tricolor lands. You've got the man lands that are, you know, uh, uh, easy to buy. Are two colors and can be win conditions. All the man lands are good. Oh, obviously. I mean, all these cards are good. Uh, you got the Ravnica lands are really cheap to pick up right now. The specialty land side, I really like. This 10 is an excellent kind of... Uh, series of cards that give you options for what the colors do. Yes, you could put in uh, Windbrush Heights over Caracas and save a lot of money there as well. Um, but that's, uh, I mean, like the man, you know, Mana Denial in the form of Rashad and Portstrip Mine and Wasteland, you could take all those cards out if you wanted to make sure people could um, still be casting all their spells. You could swap out a lot of the expensive stuff and just put in Panoramas. Um, but that's, that's how I like it. Let me go back to the Us side, since we've kind of gone through the whole spreadsheet at this point. I, well, Windbrisk might be a better card. In a 360 card environment where you're going to get those token generators all the time. It might be better. It might be better, yeah. But at the same time, like if you take the Caracas, you're probably going to be on the lookout for all the sweet legends to play with it. Then serve and delay and click. I have definitely played... I played a blue-black control deck with a Caracas in it not that long ago. Didn't have any white white spells or white cards in it. Main deck did because I wasn't that deep on like the, the Cryptic Commands slash Necros. Uh, and then I played against a guy who, like, hearted up uh, a Chroma, and I just kept shipping it back to his hand. Yeah. You take that back. <laughs> okay. So, what else do you want to talk about? Well, there about? you have it. I mean, uh, there's a skeleton cube. Uh, for everyone that asks out there, you know, where do I start? What would I build? What would it look like? I like this list a lot. We spent a lot of time on it. Um, and it is it is now forever on the blog. You can find it. It is there for you. Uh, reference it. Talk about it. We will probably make a few changes to it based on the feedback we've gotten here. Try to bring that overall cost down for people so that, again, if you were to just be like tomorrow, here. I I'll take one it. cube, please. <laughs> we haven't, that doesn't include storage, sleeves, all no. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think one quick tangent we can take that we hadn't originally planned for is we can talk about the other uh, M14 spoiler. Since we, since we talked about the Colonian Tusker, uh, yes. I think we could talk about um, a guy that I wanted to save for more talk about the graveyard, which I think is an important topic for a very soon and future show, which kind of leads into the Black's identity, what we're going to do with Black. But, all those things being said, we're going to take a look at the uh, Shadowborn Demon from currently just duels. I'm pretty, if you go to Reddit, you can probably just get the image file. Yeah. I'm actually going to do this the I'll, long way. I'll pull it up slowly here. But, uh... Yeah, there we go. Good enough. Got a born demon. You zoom in on that guy a little bit. So, we already have a 5 6 flying for a 5. We all know math. That's not hard. That card's spectacular. It's also a Necrotal. Actually, it's better than a Necrotal because it can kill a bunch of black stuff when it comes into the play. It has Trample, even sweeter. The only downside we had to look at here. He doesn't have Trample. What are you talking about? Oh, sorry. He doesn't have Trample? No, he doesn't have Trample. He doesn't need Trample. It's true, he doesn't need trample. No. And the downside being, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have fewer than six creature cards in your graveyard, you have to sacrifice a guy. So this guy seems sweet. He seems boss. Like, he's a Necrotal, but also a win condition. Like, it's pretty hard to win the game with, like, Necrotal by his Lonesome, or, like, even Shriekmaw. Like, this guy is going to do the whole job by himself. He's very aggressively costed. Um, he lives through a lot of stuff. Like, he's going to get smoked by, like, Go for the Throat, but having five toughness makes red pretty much... It makes it impossible to kill with red spells. And you could call him the Black Slayer. Yeah. 
Um, although <laughs> Black Slayer, cannot, Demon. this cannot kill Bane Slayer. Uh, wee, 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 wee. Um, We've all lived through Halo Hunter. It's okay. And and the the drawback on it is is something that is very easily I wouldn't say easy, but it's something that is very doable. Well, we're talking about Cube here, so what we want is to not have it be a drawback. We want to have it be an enabler. Look, I could you know lay a cabinet director on four mana, lay this guy on five mana, and then whoop 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 whoop. Sure. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, grave, obviously, grave crawler, blood ghast, um, you know, even maybe like venge, uh, venge vines a bit excessive. But there are plenty of ways to turn the downside into an upside, or at least a manageable side. Right. And with the cube that we have right now, really trying to use the graveyard with ways of Oath oversold of, cemetery, oath of ghouls. Yes, yeah, I was about to say. Uh, and we want to we want to farm that out more because I, I really think that's where Black's future is as a, as being a powerhouse. You know, pox works in one way. Contamination is a is a real dick move, um, but I think you know really manipulating that graveyard. That's why you know in future updates, I really want to add cards like probe. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Because blue is obviously uh, we do not currently play buried alive. I think we need some more tools. I think that card's just a little too linear as it stands right now. You know, maybe if we added necrotol or sorry, icarid. I don't know why I said necrotol. If we add icarid, um, if we add. I think Nether there are more. I think there are, ghoul. If there are more zombies, where Gravecrawler would be better. Yeah, I mean, we probably get like a uh, you know Gravecrawler and some other stuff. Probably, well, I mean, just like in uh, very live for Gravecrawler Bloodgast. Right. But you, need, you But you need some zombies to get Gravecrawler back going. That's the the one biggest mm -hmm. problem with Gravecrawler is that like a lot of times that that line of text is is a lie because you don't have any other zombies because there's just not a ton of them in the cube right now. It's something I always try and like keep in mind is like trying to bump up the zombie count. Like yeah, we should the, probably bring back Great War Muse. Like the vampire count when Nocturnus was in. Right, right. So, so there you have it. Uh, Shadowborn Demon. He's going in He's for going sure. He's going in for sure. Do you want to talk you make the card? We do want to talk you make the card. Is there any other... Uh, I mean, talking about the new set spoilers, talking about the Dragon's Maze spoilers. There's a I couple mean, other cards. We're talking about the Dragon Maze spoiler without really even trying to talk about it. Um, obviously, Maze's End isn't really going to do anything for us. No. So, uh, swing and a miss there. So, we've got... You we've make, got you make the card. You That's you what we're the card. Next. We've got enchantment. So, yeah. Locked in. We didn't get land. Thank God. We didn't get creature. It was really what we wanted. Yeah. Um, but we did get enchantment. And enchantment is, is kind of the broadest you make the card possibly ever. I mean, technically, you know, with Artifact, yeah. um, there's a lot you can do there, but Artifacts can also kind of adjust the rules like an enchantment can. But, again, think about an enchantment as any card that can kind of just change the rules of the game. If you've ever played uh, Flux, or if you've ever played right. games of that nature, where just simply having a card on the table can, can be as broad in its abilities to change the game as possible, or as narrow, we could end up making an aura. We could end up making a card that's some kind of new, not curse, not control magic. Who knows? Again, the sky's really the limit here. So I don't feel like so much like Team Creature Lost, because again, you know, when we first talked about you make the card and its impact on cube, we were looking for a, a sweet black creature. I'm surprised that Creature didn't win, or at least tie. I was surprised. I was really surprised when it was land and enchantment, because I felt like if those were the two, those were like in my head, like, the two kind of bottom-tier options, or at least what I thought people would vote. Really? I think I, like, Instant Sorcery, to me, felt like the least likely to get votes. Really? Commander players, man. They rule the world. Those are the, those are the ones that they Do put... they want creatures? Or they, they, want put, they put budget? money into magic. They play the most magic outside of the oh. intense tournament players. Do they want, like, They a, put people like you and I who cube all the time to shame. Do they want, like, a sweet, like, EDH legend? Sure. Like, when they vote creature... Because they already can print new commander sets like every year now. Yeah. I don't know. And there was just talk about how the design functionality of legendary creatures has shifted almost towards commander because of planeswalkers and how planeswalkers have taken over the role of what legendary creatures used to be. Yeah. So, all those being things being said, we get to make an enchantment. I think we still want to make a black enchantment. I think so too. I think that black is the color... I, I feel like we've been working on and tinkering with the most recently and, and as all cube builders and, and cube players have been they want they want more for black 
They really want help identifying it, bringing it powerful cards, um, and, and ha- helping it helping it do helping Black do something in the 21st century. You know, was Black in Magic in the 20th century was too dominant. It was too good. Uh, black Summer, baby. Yeah. I want another Sulfuric Vortex? That's I mean, that'd so be greedy. We can make a Black Sulfuric Vortex. Just make it lose life instead. You can just go real deep. Like, every player's upkeep, that player loses two life and puts, like, two black zomb- two, two zombies into play. <laughs> or one zombie. Like, I mean... Like, so I got a reverse call from the grave, but also with Sulfuric Vortex on top of it. I mean, I think, like, a cool... Like, I think black is the color that gets the most... It's the most up in the air in terms of, like, any cube list you look at, mostly, like, very, you're going to find very similar blue cards, very similar white, red, you know, green cards. Black is going to be the most different because people have, you know, completely, vastly different takes but on I th- what's good in black. And I think that it's it's really interesting to try and figure out, like, is the super heavy mono black plan better? Is the pox plan better? Is trying to play graveyard? You know, there are so many different ways you can go with it. And because black in cube has been kind of underpowered for a while, people are really desperate to try and figure out like something that works. Yeah. Again, I think that there's you see the most kind of uh, deviation in black because people are trying so hard to find out what's good for it. I mean, I think you know we all know why blue is good in cube. We don't need to. It's like, oh, I instituted a, a sweet cephalid strategy into my cube to help blue out. Yeah. I'm like, what? Abotion and friends? Apple Apo- Burfolk in. Yeah. Well, that, like, halfway makes sense. Yeah. Like, fish are strong. But, like, so I, I would really like to see it be black, and I would I would really like to see it be some form of, uh, some kind of, like, an engine kind of piece. Ideally, something that works with the graveyard. So, yes, yeah, so that was, you know, it kind of flowed into a topic that might be its own show. We might be able to get it all in today, because we've only used just over an hour. Um... Yeah, the black enchantment that does something for us to help us out with the graveyard. Now, obviously we can't print another Oversold Cemetery or Oath, because... What if it's just, like, I mean, like, at the simplest level, uh, black and one, during your upkeep, you could search your library for a creature card and put that card into your graveyard. Is that too good? I don't know. Like, we all know Entomb is too good. And that's like a two... That's a one-mana tutor. And this is kind of a two-mana tutor. But, it also, but it's a delayed effect because it's, delayed it's an effect, enchantment. But you get to do it... You get to do it multiple times. Yeah. That could be good. As opposed to being any card, I would just say creatures just because like it seems more black thematically. Like, you know, it's a cemetery or a graveyard or something you know it's there's a bunch of bodies lying around whatever yeah i mean i, I you know my mind initially kind of thought you know even with the most recent spoiler card that we got where it's like oh we could have something that's like when it enters the battlefield um a, a, each player can search their library for any of the creature cards and put them into the graveyard i mean i don't know like that like what so I, it has about, to do something about a card that we never right? see stand who knows? <laughs> I mean, I don't think making it... Second draw a card. Duh! <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that defeats the purpose of it being an enchantment. I think having a persistent effect is, like, what they're going to want us to make, or what they're going to, like, guide, like, the design around, is, like, trying to have... If it, it you know, either it's an aura, or it's... If it's a permanent, you know, non-aura enchantment, it's going to be, like, some kind of, you know, thing where you... Uh, do something every turn, or it's a permanent change on the game, you know, like Night of Souls Betrayal or something. You know, maybe not that, but. That would be good. I mean, another Night, another Night of Souls Betrayal would be awesome. They cost like three. It's cost like triple black. Does that have to be legendary? I mean, for, for our purposes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The triple black Night of Souls Betrayal? I mean, I guess we could also be really greedy and ask for it to be a triple black. All non-black creatures. <laughs> yeah, that would be very like good. a reverse crusade. Yeah, a yeah. reverse bad moon. I mean, but again, like the the point that I'm really trying to get at is that with enchantment, the sky is the limit. The the, the spectrum is the most broad. Our opportunity to do something with power level is the most that's there. I mean, just think about like a demonic uprising that we saw recently from Amazon Restored. Yeah, like 
if you were to just kind of go to the you make the card thing and that was what you came up with, that's a pretty radical notion of things you can do with magic cards, let alone black enchantments, and that's really cool. Like it's not yeah. it's not really aggressively cube costed or No, but like where we want to be, but yeah. The idea is sound. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, there's just a million different ways you can go with it. And enchantments are permanents. They can be sacked for effects. It'll be interesting to see how how it, how this goes down. I mean, especially because, you know, in terms of voting and how everyone decides on stuff. Because the last time they were really doing this, it was kind of before the, like, heavily social media influence world. It'll be interesting yeah, to see if that know, plays a part in it at all. I, I think as we get closer... I mean, you know, the, just the discussions are going to be broader and they're going to be more in depth and more people are going to spend more time thinking about it than they did in previous iterations. I think that if we were to redo Vanish of Memory 2013, uh, it wouldn't turn out that way, even if our memories had all been wiped of how it turned, like, what brought us there. Right. I don't think it would happen that way. Um, and there's so many more people playing Magic. I think that we're, you know, in, in a broader sense, we're going to see a lot more Commander players. People that are more interested in kitchen top, kitchen tabletop magic, slower games, longer games. I mean, we could see a black enchantment that costs five, six, seven mana. Ugh, please no. I mean, I. It'll be. I, I could probably say design a black enchantment that costs seven mana. What would it do? Uh, I don't know. If being of your upkeep, you win the game. Something I don't know. No, it's black. It'd be like that opponent loses the game. Sure. I love be multiplayer fun. Exactly. Then it's the politics. You lose, then you lose, then you lose. You all get a loss. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I, like, ideally, all I really... Like, we obviously have to take this in baby steps. I think I would like to start in black. I think that black needs the help. Black can certainly have a powerful card that's an enchantment. They've, you know... It'll be interesting to see how it goes from there. I would like to see something that costs... Two, three, four mana at the most. Um, I would prefer not to see an aura, unless it's insane, which I doubt it would be. I, you know, some kind of engine, preferably graveyard related, because that's where at least we've been going. But I could easily see an argument if it's, you know, maybe it's the kind of mono black swamps matter kind of card that is the tipping point for putting stuff like Mutilate back in and, like, going back into that direction instead of going the graveyard direction. Maybe it's, you know, some kind of cool sacrifice effect sort of situation where, like, you can then... Again, with enchantments, it's... You do... You have all that space. I mean, how cool would it be to see something like Celestial Dawn-type cards, like... But for black, and you know, do something else that's proactive. I mean, you know, in any world, sacrifice you can... a draw card. <laughs> no sacrifice. <laughs> Enter the battlefield, draw a card deck. Okay. Black. So just like black and one, uh, all your lands are now swamps in addition to their basic land types. Uh, you know, all your creatures and spells are black on top of it. Enter the battlefield, draw a card. Okay. I mean, I really think that's that spectacular. No, it's not. <laughs> but it would just make you know, kind of increase the value of. Gralf's Messenger and I mean, Potence and Cube. I think it would be cool. Black life gain would be huge, because we have all these things that kill our life totals as the Black Drafter and Cube. It would be cool if there was some kind of... If it was some kind of, like, interesting life draining. Just, you know, like... Almost like, you know, like Siphon Soul, but every turn well, What's something? the Black Sanctuary from Apocalypse? Oh, uh, Necro Sanctuary? Is that the one where it's like... During your upkeep, if you could... They choose. lose one, and if they... If every, isn't every other player loses one, yeah. you gain that much life? And then if, if you but have But make both. that a good one-on-one card. Yeah. Like, you know, even if it was just, like, you know... it If it was just an enchantment that's, like, you know, you, you lose... They lose some amount of life, and you gain some amount of life. And if you have, like, seven swamps in play, they discard a card, you draw a card. Yeah. Or, like, they sacrifice yeah. it. Yeah. Like, if it was, like, a scalar effect like that, like, yeah. if, you, if you have... It costs, like, say it costs, like, three or four, okay. right? And then it's, like, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have three swamps in play, they lose two, you gain two. Mm-hmm. If you have five swamps in play, they discard a card, you draw a card. Mm-hmm. If you have seven swamps in play, they sacrifice a creature, you zombify a creature. Or put a 5-5 five, five demon token on or the Or whatever, yeah, like something, or, like, you know, so it's, like, the more heavily black you are, the more powerful it becomes, and, like, scales up as the game goes on. Like, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, like, give some of those mono black decks uh, 
that would help a lot. I mean, again, maybe it's fixing for black. Maybe it's incentive just to be black. Maybe it's uh, just life gain would be nice. You know, as we're moving to a world where we want to put Skull Scrying back in the cube, we want to play it, Knight's Whisper. It should just be like Knight's Whisper that gains you two life instead of costs you two life. Yeah, it gains you life, draws you cards. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds that sounds pretty black for two mana. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could involve like second creatures or something. Because, right. Again, it's an enchantment. It could just sit there on the battlefield and be like sack a guy. What if it was, what if it was black? Boneyard? What if it was black? Sack a guy, gain three life. Just black elf. How boneyard? good would that be? Like there's a sack a guy gain three life would be huge in black. There's a lot of different you know kind of interesting ways you can go with it, and I think that you know it'll be interesting to see, especially because enchantment is so wide open. It'll be interesting to see how um, complex they let us get, and like how like how many levels of things that they will let us do, or like how because like you look at a card like Crucible, like Crucible is very powerful, but it's also very simple. Like, it is effectively one line of text. You yep. can play lands from your graveyard. Like, you know, Vanish into Memory is fairly complex, but all, at the same time, like, it, it, from a design standpoint, it's, like, relatively simple. Like, you slide the guy, you draw, and then discard based on the two numbers on the card. Yeah. Like, it's simple enough to explain. But what if it had an aura on it, Eck, and I drew more? Or if it, you know, what if it if it gets plus for something when it's... A, yeah, okay. I don't know. I, I mean, so... Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Like, it'll be it, interesting to see, like, how complex they allow us to get. In many ways, it feels like you make the card has been rebooted. Yeah. Because we can do anything we want since we have enchantment. Right. Um, we just have it be an enchantment that puts a token into play that's the creature we wanted to make. <laughs> yes. yes we can. And then you can sacrifice it to draw a card. <laughs> Sacrificing a chair with some draw cards is very key. <laughs> it's important that you always are able to sacrifice these draw cards. I just want, I mean, like, again, if we could just keep it simple. Black and one enchantment, sacrifice a creature, gain through life. I like the. I like All the, of a sudden, like, you know, like, we're, we're slowly increasing the value of active treason type cards in, in Cube. Things that they're very happy to print for us in standard, I, limited environments. I mean, I, I would I would be very happy with that first thing I suggested, the, like, Entomb for Guys every upkeep. Yeah, I don't... That one, I don't know. There's got to be something we're overlooking. Well, of course there is. I mean, there's obviously something that's going to I mean, be I'm just saying, like, there's got to be something with that effect that we're overlooking. That's, that's got to that's gotta be too good, right? I mean, it'd be good in Dredge, but isn't a two mana enchantment that triggers on your own upkeep too slow for tournament playable dredge yeah for like legacy or vintage dredge I don't know like they don't even play mana right well there are various forms of dredge but to me it's like none of them um, some of them cast spells that cost two mana they definitely cast a lot of most the vast majority of them cost ta- cast spells that cost one mana yeah and oftentimes they cast ones that cost two mana I mean it'll be interesting to see if they let us even get to touch on the graveyard because I think they've realized how powerful of a of a resource um, being able to exploit your graveyard is. So it'll be interesting to see like if they it waxes and wanes. It'll be interesting to see what kind of limitations they put on us when it gets to the point of like submitting rules text. If they, say, I mean, like, you could submit whatever you want, but the things that they're going to show as the choices you have to pick from, right, are going to be reflective yeah. of how they feel is appropriate, you know, not overly complex, et cetera, et cetera. If you were just to submit a card out of nothing, because, again, we're still so wide. It's not like, you know. Okay. I think we've, uh, you know, we, we've, we've hammered it home. We want black. Uh, if it wasn't going to be black, it would be green. And if it, it doesn't end up being black or green, Who we'll, go, we'll go back to the drawing board when we get the we'll next. We'll just make another Sulfuric Vortex that you could stack to draw a card. That'd be fine. Or, like, you could, like, what if Sulfuric Vortex you could stack it to, like, four to a creature? Sure, why not? <laughs> and uh, at the same time. Yeah, and yeah, at the same time. Was there anything else on our... We can talk about uh, Magic Online Champs. We could, we could analyze uh, our buddy Sam's draft. Oh yeah, that was the bonus thing. That's much more of a, of a video side than a, uh, a text side. Do you really want to read for everyone? <laughs> so I mean, I kind of want to... I do want to talk about those drafts. And we do have them in here, draft. Here's what we do for today. For the live viewer crowd, for those of you that came out on the uh, East Coast, the, the few in the proud, because we're not in our regular time slot, um, we'll go through Sam's pack. For the podcast portion of this, we'll, we'll bid a do so that Eck doesn't have to read the name of every single card. That'd be nice. <laughs> and we'll do a bit of a bonus for the live side, since uh, we're here at a different time slot, and uh, you guys are here. We'll go through that. 
Um, so on the on the audio side, just to wrap things up, this is a bit of a bonus episode. We want to talk about the Skeleton Cube. You can find all of these resources at ecomon.blogspot.com. Um, check out the Skeleton Cube list. Uh, use it, hopefully. We put some time and energy into it. Um, you know, it, it's fun just to go to FNM with a trade list. It's even more fun to go there with the intent to build the sweet cube. Absolutely. If you're feeling particularly gener- generous, there's a donate button on the site as well. Yeah, for, we are uh, cube streaming. We're upping our back. professionalism. Again, we are bringing you a bonus episode here on Monday. We are trying to smooth over the abortion that was last Wednesday and okay. bring you some more quality content. Uh, you can currently find us slowly catching up pace on mtgcast.com. We are looking to uh, further our magic community involvement through other outlets. Um, so check out our interactive um, Reddit posts that will usually go there. Salvation, a little less so, but uh, still on Salvation. And uh, looking to uh, kind of permeate through other areas of the community. Um, but that is pretty much it. You Again, if you just go to the blog spot, our contact info is there, the cube list info there, the cube league info is there, the cube achievements info is there, the cube picks are there. Um, that's pretty much yeah. all the important stuff. I think so. so. So, until next week when we hope to have updates on our artwork and X uh, sweet guitar riff for our new intro music, uh, okay. that'll be pretty much it on the audio side. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on Wednesday or whenever you're listening to this later. And we're clear. All right, so. So now for you, those of us who are just Fuck on the people the- on audio, right? Am I right? They, so, they weren't here live. They don't get nearly as much cool stuff as you guys do. So anyway, so let's go to the draft viewer. So we're going to look at um, Sam Party's uh, draft. Can we... Is there a way to make this any bigger for them? I'm working on that. All right. There we go. Oh, that actually kind of works. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There we go. So we're going to talk about um, Sam's draft. We're going we're gonna to try... We're going to just assume and hope that our picks will align with his picks. And once things start to derail, uh, we'll change the conversation. I'm going to move the mic a little bit. That works for me. Okay, so out of this pack, if I was to open up this pack of the draft, to me, my eyes clearly move to Grave Titan, Noble Hierarch, or Upheaval. Uh, I'm taking one of those cards for sure. I think I'm taking Grave Titan. I like taking Noble Hierarch. Underground Sea is fine. I think what's weird to me is that there is literally one black card in the pack. And it's Grave Titan. There's kind of two green cards in the pack. There's kind of... There's, there's kind, kind of two red cards. I this like one's one weird. But again, like there, to me, there's really... like There's a clearly a blue card. There's clearly a black card. Uh, and green is a little more uh, The Moto Cube more is weird. so... There's so many bad cards in this pack. Yes, it's, it's full of bad cards. Yes, it's weird. Well, I'll take Lake of the Dead. Uh, Lake of the... Hey, the Powered Cube on Moto over the winter, I went deep on Lake of the Dead. The, oh, I the lake that. was very deep, and yeah. it was very good. So I would like to take Grave Titan here. I would like to take Upheaval because why would you not take one of the best cards in all of Cube? Bold. Come on! Alright. So Sam takes Upheaval. Alright, so one for two. We can continue this. We will unshow his pick. Yeah. We'll go to the next pack. So we've got 13 cards. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have, have a, rogue, a rogue Yavama Elder. He's escaping. Um, in this pack, I like Bitter Blossom, I like Narcolepsy, I like Hinder, I like Sulfur Falls. All of those cards are going to be good man, with... Pristine Angel? I haven't seen that guy in a long time. So <laughs> cards that won't be good with my upheaval are Pristine Angel and Mirror Battlesphere. Mirror Battlesphere? Um, so I mean, Bitter Blossom seems fine. Bloodbraid Elf is awesome on pure power. But I want to, like, when I've got upheaval, I want to kind of control the game... And then I want to, like, lay upheaval. So to me, like, Narcolepsy, Hinder are, are very important cards. But, like, so is Bitter... Like, Bitter Blossom buys you a ton of time. Like, it even can. if it's just, it, like, as... It, it like, can. Working as Force Field. Bitter Blossom, I think, can be a similar role player to upheaval, where it's, like, protect this card and make this card happen. So with Bitter Blossom, it's like, I also want to have the Narcolepsies and the Hinders. But Bitter Blossom can become my wing Bitter Blossom is also not the absolute worst post-upheaval play, provided you're at a high enough life total. But you rarely are. Yeah. Like, upheaval into Bitter Blossom, I have watched people die from that many times. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Before we show pick, what are you taking out of this pack, Eck? 
I mean, if I'm on blue, like, I'm probably just taking Narcolepsy. Cause I mean, hey, you took a Grave Titan, so you're probably taking Bitter Blossom. If I, if I take Grave Titan, I'm taking Bitter Blossom. I can get behind that. If I took Grave Titan, I would also be taking Bitter Blossom. Yeah. Since I didn't, since I took Upheaval, I would be taking... Okay, this is the Moto Cube. Yeah. God, if it was our cube, I would take Hinder. I, if I it think was not our Narcolepsy. cube, I have to take Narcolepsy. Yeah. I, th- I, think, I think that's right. I mean, I, w- I still want to take Hinder. Same so he does take the Bitter Blossom. Okay. okay. So, I'm He's back He's a little, little from column A. A little, little from B. column B. Okay. Alright, so... Next. Pick three. Now we've got... Ooh. Oh, Etched Oracle still Snapping off that reman. Oh, man. Etched Oracle? Sick. Well, X probably taking that thirst, that Soren's thirst. Uh, He's going to end up in, like, mono-black garbage. <laughs> mono-black <laughs> garbage. Just take that fetid heath. Just snap the fetid heath and then go you would, away. You, you could, no. I could see you doing that. Um, I mean, like, Maelstrom Pulse isn't the worst here. Soren's Thirst is okay. I'm taking Remand. Yeah, I mean, Remand, if you have any blue cards, like, you just want Remand. Now, you might actually want... He picked... Pack 2, he picked Bitter Blossom. So he so went Sam, yeah, and then Sam's picks Blossom. up to this point were, were double blue and then... Okay, so... I'm taking Remand. Not even close. What are you taking, Ek? Uh, if I'm on the Mono Black plan? Well, no, you're on the You Took Grave Titan, then You Took Bitter Blossom oh, plan. I'm probably just taking Maelstrom Pulse. Anyway. That seems real loose. Why would you take Maelstrom Pulse over Soren's Thirst? Eh, because Soren's Thirst is bad. Anyway, I'm going to take Soren's Thirst because you're, your hope is to table it? Yeah. Sam takes Remand, makes sense. Remand's probably one of the best cards in that pack. And you're blue, so, you know. Makes perfect sense. Sure. All right. Pack four. Now I'm interested in is it boiler works? Negate. See if I check Maelstrom Pulse last pack. Now I get deed. Like well, that's. Oh, deed. you just got fucking lucky. That's all that happened. Oh yeah. Okay. Why would you? No, you look. You got. You have Grave Titan, which you're going to slam at six. You got Bitter Blossom, which can be a liability. And you want to take black cards, and if you take the Soren's Thirst, you take the only black card out of that pack, why would you just snap off Soren's Thirst? Unless your plan was to have it clearly wheel for you. Which is clearly the plan. There's, I passed no black. All right, all right, Eck, Eck, you got lucky. You took Maelstrom Pulse, now you're taking Pernicious Deed. So my deck's sweet. Uh, my deck, which is currently Upheaval, Narcolepsy, Remand, now has the tough choice of is it Boiler Works or Negate. Thank you, Lewis. Soren's Thirst will wheel 100%. It's a creature-based cube. I don't really want to take Negate. I think Negate will wheel. As much as I want to just kind of take Negate... Negate's the only blue card. I'm taking Negate, because it's the only blue card. So what is Sam... So Sam here has Upheaval, Bitter Blossom, Remand? Yeah. So Sam's pick, then... I mean, he could take Reanimate, I guess, but that seems pretty weak. He could take any card that's theoretically in his colors. If I, had, if, I, if, I, if I had Sam's cards, I think I'd still take Negate. Yeah, that's not the worst. I just, Negate's pretty meh. It is pretty meh, but so is his pack. Sublime Archangel, okay. Okay, so Sam is going for the Royal Sampler at this point. <laughs> Did Sam misclick? No, I mean, his goal could be to just kind of diversify. I mean, he has a very powerful He's diversifying card. his bonds. He's... 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 he's, he's <laughs> it's too <laughs> funny. Um... Yeah, he's diversifying. He could go any direction. Now he has one of the best white cards in the cube. Okay, so Sam's... He does love Hero Blade Hole, which is important to point out. Yeah, that is true. That is, like, one of Sam's favorite cards. Okay, so... So Ek is probably snapping off Gatekeeper of Malakir or or Stillman Cavalier. Or Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant's a sweet one. To go with your uh, Bitter Blossom and your Grave Titan? Yeah, why not? Ever. I mean, surprisingly enough, as we're doing this... Uh, it's true that Bitter Blossom is good with Sublime Archangel. Yeah, but Black White is so rough. Black White is horrible, and you already passed the Fetid Heath. Yeah, you which is the only card you want in that deck. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. okay. So all of these things considered, X picks have been the most exciting because this pack is the most exciting for what X has going on. Like, I could even just take Civic Wayfinder here, and it wouldn't be bad. Oh yeah, you could take yeah. If you're green black with all that hot green black action, yeah, like you could take Wayfinder and just like table Cavalier or Gatekeeper. Yeah, it's not even the worst. Yeah, I get behind taking Civic Wayfinder here a lot. I mean, I'm not on pure power level, but that's very suicidal. Bob, again with the power cube, there are sorry with the Moto unpowered cube, there isn't enough for you to like kind of like retake advantage. Um, with Bob, there's just too much creature combat. There's too much seemingly normal fair magic going on. Yeah, that it just doesn't work. 
That's okay, so for my blue deck, I forgot what I what did I take last. Oh, I took negate. So I've got I've got I'm blue. just blue. I'm taking I'm taking the bob. Okay. So Sam, meanwhile, is on the royal sampler. Yeah, Sam, we've completely lost track of space and time. He's probably gonna take shrieking grotesque. Interesting. I was gonna say he'll take confidant if he wants to be like a white blacky kind of aggressive. Or, uh, yeah, I think I would actually want good test. Alright, so let's see, let's see what Sam took. What does Sam take? Okay. okay. He definitely has the royal sampler. <laughs> he's he's working very hard to have every color represented fairly. Um, but you know, it's also important to, to point out at this point, I don't have a blue card to take, and I'm the, I'm the guy who's trying to cut blue. Last pack, I only had one blue card, <laughs> and it was, it was, it was the game. So I mean, like moving out of blue actually is not the worst, just because like, not necessarily moving out of blue because we're definitely going to be blue rich next pack. But I mean, like being aware of the fact. Or that sorry, that series of packs too, not necessarily yeah. uh, pack six. Uh, let's let's uh, let's continue to bring it. Okay. I just I just like you know we've been completely wrong about Sam's picks. I really wish Sam was here today so we could talk to him. He's currently on a plane. I know. Well, Eck, remember that time you took Civic Wayfinder? Now you get to snap off Phyrexian Rager. I'm just like a little va I'm just like value all over the place. So, I mean, I, d I really don't like Thalonite Hermit. The card is really slow. If I'm drafting green black, and I'm you, I'm either taking Blood Crypt or Phyrexian Rager, and it's not close. Oh no, I agree with you 100. <laughs> I, I, I I'm just like thinking a lot about this pack. From Sam's pack. He has got to take Mirror Entity, right? From Sam's perspective? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he already has the Bitter Blossom as Sublime Archangel to be in white. Well, the Mirror Entity is kind of like doubling up on Sublime Archangel, if that makes sense to people. Yeah, like, it's an it's an alternate Sublime Archangel in a way. Like, I, I think Sam takes Mirror Entity here. Alright, so now that we're following, like, three distinctly different lines, Ek go Rager, Sam, we assume, go Mirror Entity, I am definitely taking misdirection. Oh yeah. All you, right. You get. You're like right back on on target. Kind of. I really don't like okay. misdirection. All right. Sam takes wake, wake thrasher. Aha. Uh -huh. So I don't know. So he's short a green card from being all over the map, right? So Sam is clearly high. Not really. Like, did his mouse break? I mean, Wake Thrasher's kind of good with upheaval, right? No. Did he disconnect? Like, this makes no sense to me. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. All right, let's go on to seven. I, 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 I got a time to say about this. Oh, boom! Nice game, familiar. Get in my deck. Oh, well. All kinds of sweet ones. <laughs> the birds. All right, Eck. So you've got like Vengevine or Urborg. Urborg's not bad. Vengevine. Rude Awakening seems a little excessive. I do like Rude Awakening, though. I don't like Rude Awakening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think. Like, is you have you have Pulse Deed. Everything okay over there? Yeah, I'm just seeing if Sam is online anywhere. I'm, I'm telling you, he's on a plane. He might still be... They have the internet on planes now, you know. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. All right, so... Okay. I'm taking Nightscape Familiar. Are you taking Vengemite or Urborg? Yeah. I think I'm taking Vengemite. And Sam clearly snaps off Phantasmal Bear here to go for <laughs> the complete aids. But not, like, scroll rack to try and, like... No, he's got Wake Thrasher. There's only one deck that wants Wake Thrasher. That's the same deck with Phantasmal Bear. Yeah, no. For once, we're on it. Well <laughs> done, actually. I thought it might have been Nines of Vastwood at this rate. For the, for the full for the full You would take Rude Awakening, please. Yeah. Come on. Uh, Rude Awakening with um, with Wake Thrasher? Get the fuck out. Alright. So I have a Tolerant Sky Summoner. I think Sam also has a Tolerant Sky Summoner. What do you have? Probably a Savage Lands. Yeah, you have a Savage Lands. You, I, well, I mean, like, you like Liliana Vest or Plow Under or Savage Lands. I don't really want to play out of these cards. I think you want Liliana Vest, actually. Ah, oh, that card's so bad. You can tutor for Deed or you can tutor for Grave Titan? Come on. It's okay. 
It's so, okay. So slow. I'm going to wipe the board. I mean, first of all, you're going to gain life because they have to attack it. Or they don't have anything in play, like, and you're just pumping okay, the fist. I mean, fine, I'll take Liliana, I guess. But I'm not Gosh. like I'm not thrilled about it. I'm you just, have a Tauren. I think Sam also has Tauren. Yeah, I mean, like he's he makes guys. He's, down there. Yeah, he's somehow. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, okay. We're starting to understand what's. We're st he like threw away a bunch of picks though, which is really weird. Yeah. So back to this one. So stone nothing came back for me. I get troll aesthetic, so I'm stoked. I'm taking Lake of the Dead to maybe upheaval <laughs> with. That is bold. Uh, Sam, Sam has okay. So Sam has a sublime archangel, so he could take silverblade paladin. He has a grim lava mitzvah, so he could take Genji of the spires. And he has everything but green and the kitchen sink, so he's not taking Bancharm, which is so clearly the best card. I think it's Genju or Silverblade Palace. Agreed. Uh, wholeheartedly, that's one of the two cards Sam will take. Or, which one are you taking? You're taking Troll Setting, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so Sam takes so Silverblade, Silverblade Paladin. Paladin. That makes sense. So he could be like. So he doesn't blue... have Mirror Entity, but he came back for the Silverblade Paladin? So he could be like Blue Whitey Beats, I guess. Uh, Here, I'm... I get Hypnotic Specter. I also get Hypnotic Specter. Okay, and Sam gets Sulfur Falls. Yeah. I mean, he could take Near Hearth Pilgrim since he just took the other guy. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Pulse and How right. Thor. How smart. I was like a fucking genius right now. So, so Sam take like Firelick thing? No. <laughs> Sam takes Etched Oracle, obviously. Just wham bam. Thank you, man. Let's see what Sam took since all my, my cards are all I think at this point we can just leave Sam's picks on because we're here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, yeah. Goblin Cadets. We okay. will turn it back off when we get to 15. Oh, then the, the, the gate and tabled the and the deed tabled? This is a wacky draft. Yeah, I hate to say it, Eck, but I think... So you would have got you would have got Gatekeeper back. Yeah. My deck is looking Yeah, X, X line big. here by taking Grave Titan first. Oh, Mirror Entity tabled and Sam didn't take it. <laughs> this this has got to be where he decides to just go a completely different direction. This is where he's like, okay, he has that Sulfur Falls, he's just going to play Blue-Red. Because he has a Lava Mancer... And the Cadets. And the Goblin Cadets. And the Phantasmal Bear. Yeah. So he, like, has a plan, unfortunately. Oh, and her, oh my god. Yeah, X, X deck is surprisingly insane. good. So... Okay, so pack two. So I've got, like, the sickest black-green deck ever. I'm taking Watery Grave to go with my blue touching-on-black upheaval deck. Not Mororu? Eh. Yeah. You reckon Mororu? Uh, uh, or pack vacation? Uh, no, I'm taking Watery Grave. I'm probably... Sam and Sam's deck. I'm probably taking, taking... Forked Bolt? Ugh, God. Yeah. Or Moloku? He's taking Fork, Forked Bolt or Moloku. I think he's probably taking Moloku. Just because, like, on a power level... Concern. I think I get Trainer's Edict, which is fine. You don't want Natural Order? Or even, like, Lodestone Golem seems pretty okay in your deck? Mm. I think I'd take Vigilante before I took either of those cards. What? You would take Nintuka Vigilante over Natural Order or even Lodestone Golem? Yes. In the MTGO cube? Yes. I am very confused. I'd probably take Trainer's Edict, though, and be fine with it. Alright. Okay, so what does Sam take? Ravages of War. Okay, he's not off the white plan yet. And we're still... We're he still... ships the Mirror Entity, because he knows if he takes Mirror Entity and then goes into okay. Armageddon, it just doesn't work. The best part is he could still have, like, a decent blue-white aggro deck, despite the fact that he's botched, like, several of these picks. It's by, kinda... like... Sam has, Sam has had this weird problem in this draft of being non-committal at weird times. Like... He very not wanting to move in on something. Right, he, very like he could have pulled the trigger earlier, like a million times over, and hasn't, and has is like very middling as a result. Oh, uh, get in my belly, Force Spike! I need you so bad. Uh, you got Grave Robber here, I think, or Misty Rainforest. I'm kind of eyeballing that Huntmaster off this, wanting to splash it. I. Like, that's kind of greedy, but... Uh, you are full-blown greed, Eck. But I, I know, but I'm so greedy. Shh. Just let it flip and then kill him with your, uh... Purnish Steed. Yeah, there you go. I'm taking so, Force Spike. What? So, I mean, I feel like this is just, like, a game we can't win anymore, but what so is Sam Sam, Sam, like, has to take Porcelain Legionnaire, right? He could be white. Because he, he cast could... it and everything? Yeah. Like, he, he could, could play he... Porcelain Re Legionnaire and yeah. Or, he's like a red, a red, blue creatures deck, and he can still cast Porcelain Legionnaire as a three power first strike guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think you, it's got, just... you get a fetch land, I get a force spike, he gets a Legionnaire. Now he gets opposition. What the actual fuck? I mean, it's good with, if he gets, so... He, he has gets... Tower End, and he has, like, Phantasmal Bear and well, stuff. Well, he still has Bitter Blossom, and he still has... This is mind blowing. He still has Sublime Archangel to maybe go with more white guys. I mean, 
I don't. He has Bitter Blossom to go in that position, I guess? Yeah. But he has no other black cards? Like, this is so wacky. Alright, let's move on. Ooh, Attrition. I think I'm taking Stupor. Yeah, I'm taking Stupor. I think I'm taking Skin Render and liking it. Yeah, you're probably taking Skin Render and liking it. Although you do have Venge Vine, and you can take that Attrition. I mean, Attrition is just pretty sweet. Now, meanwhile, for Sam, this is a clear turning point. He has either got to take a Johnny Goldmane and, and like, lock into white. Or Prophetic Volt or Electrolyze with the intent to get the other one back. I think you take Electrolyze and hope to table Prophetic Volt, but you're not set if you don't. You could just take Bone Splitter. I mean, but at this point, like, the way Sam has been drafting this, I don't see him taking a safe card now. Like, why... Why start playing it, playing it safe at this point? Colored cards are generally better than colorless cards in cube. Although you do get the, uh, you have the chance of going real deep, going uh, trinket mage bone splitter for your blue beatdown deck. That's so deep. I, I think it's just electrolyze. It's probably electrolyze. Like he could just fuck with us and take honor of the pure. He could, uh, he could just take like Torian Mauler or something. Who fucking knows? Firebolt. Okay. That seems atrocious. I mean, it's not atrocious. He could have took Volcanic Fallout. That would have been atrocious. The, uh, yeah, sure. But like, well, you definitely take a Johnny over Honor. But I mean, yeah, I agree with that. Plus, you just don't want to play a double white spell. And, you know, within your deck, where a bunch of white guys are this better. This is just really weird. Let's move on. Ooh. I got a Tarmogoyf. I got a Brainstorm. Swish. Uh, Sam gets a uh, Magma Jet. Gotta be Magma Jet. He just took Firebolt. Not Brainstorm? Not Gorehouse Chainwalker? Gorehouse Chainwalker is his pick instead. Okay. I mean, he does have opposition. Right. So. Right. He can find it with a Brainstorm. Oh, wait. No. Okay. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I don't want... Thieving Magpie or Palancron, and I don't want Grolf's Messenger either. In the in the blue, the blue deck that I'm trying to draft out of this draft, do you just take like Hinterland Harbor for potential splash? Yeah, that's what I, I would take. Hinterland Harbor. You get Avengers Endicar, I guess, in the hopes of tabling um, Grolf's Messenger. No, I meant. Oh, sorry. The no, you're going to try to table the National Order from when you didn't take it earlier. Oh, because National Order into Avengers Endicar is a real sick play. I think it's better than you're sarcastically saying otherwise. I, this is the unpowered MTGO cube. Yeah, it's still bad. What'd Sam take? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, we're. Talk about a card that would have wheeled. <laughs> he could have just taken Boros Jar. We have clearly, He's taken some red cards and some white cards, right? We have clearly gone off the deep end. I really... Oh, my God. We have to get Sam on for Wednesday so we can talk about this. I mean, he'll be on eventually. It doesn't, I know. it doesn't have to be right now. Oh, it, this is going to eat away at my soul until we figure out what happened here. He was just having some kind of weird Tourette's. Like, repeal! And Eck gets braids. I'm not <laughs> happy about it. You could just take Mishra's Factory, or you could take... I just take all his dust. You could just take uh, Sulphurous Springs. It's not the worst. Sam gets repeal, probably. I think Sam went 2-1 in this draft. I don't remember, because again, they like refused to show him in coverage. Unless he was playing Reed Duke. Yeah. yeah. That seems fine. I mean, you know, obviously we're taking Coralash. Uh. Obviously. Uh, I'm taking Bad River. Wow. Coralash? Really? Okay. Yeah, not a magic card. I do have the Urborg. Dude, Ak shut up. You're taking Woodfall Primus. Uh, I'm taking Bad River. You're taking Woodfall Primus. Sam Sam's taking Ninja. Right? Not not Keldon Champion. No, 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 no. That's way too. Hello, good. Keldon Champion. No, no, because he's got the the Phantasmal Bears and the Goblin Cadet. He's going turn one one drop and then into Ninja. I get all right, all right, all right. Block this I, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. All right, see, all right, yeah. all right. That makes sense. Ninja's good with all those one drops. I am taking Slaughter Pact. Oh, exploration. I'm probably just taking Slaughter Pact as well. Or Naturalize. 
No, you're, it, it, remember, it's the MTGO cube. It's not our cube. Oh, yeah, okay. In our cube, okay. you take Naturalize. Yeah, yeah. In this cube, you'll take Slaughter Pack. Sam's taking Rift Bolt or Curse Catcher? Oh, he's definitely taking Curse Catcher. He just did Stag Ninja, so I would yeah, take Yeah, come on, Curse Catcher. Oh, he took uh, Rift Bolt. No, All right. fuck you. Um... Well, my watery grave table. <laughs> well, my uh, took a vigilante table. <laughs> what a surprise, Zach! <laughs> Sam's gonna like slam price of progress here. How do you not take Boros Garrison or Pact of Negation or Watery Grave, <laughs> Brewbait Dragon? So not price of progress. Yeah, Pact, Pact of negation. negation. Nothing's grosser than attacking for lethal when you only have four lands in play and then just snap it off. Oh, he gets a four spike here for sure. Or hero box. He gets. He takes four spike. Come on, yeah. show me four spike. Yeah. yeah, you can leave the picks on from here on out. Oh, oh, they all, all the business <laughs> comes back. Now he gets electrolyze. Although he takes <laughs> prophetic gold, he could have had both, and they would have been real good in his deck, though. Magma Jet came back. Oh. What the fuck? Nice pack, Badlands. Jesus, that's nice. actually a sick combo. <laughs> I know. Four cards. I know. <laughs> Palancron so. came back. I would have got a Palancron at least. Brains oh, comes Brains. back. And yeah. Yeah. surprise! Yeah. Alright, so take the show pick off. Yeah. Alright. So Sam's got like a aggressive red blue thing. We've got eleven magic cards. Twelve, thirteen magic cards? I don't know why they're all the way down there. No, there's six. Oh, six. I see. Okay, this is actually fifteen. Okay. Oh god. I think I'm taking Tropical Island to go with my Hinterland Harbor. <laughs> and just crossing your fingers. Oh, the Hub by Coast still sent this back. Yeah. And Ek, you are taking Devoted Druid or Wall... No, you're taking Wall of Roots. I'm probably taking Wall of Roots or Lotus Cover because I have a fetch land. Um, I think you still want Wall of Roots. What does Sam take? Sam he takes Plated GOP. Uh, yeah, or... Uh, he could take Frenzy. No, he can't because it'll definitely come back. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's taking Plated GOP. Yep, yep, right, yep, right. yep. Three for three on that one. Yeah. Oh, man. Ooh. I could have Tragic Slip, Condescend, or Dissipate here. Well, I already have Hinder, so I'm taking Condescend. I get Short Fang, which is not the worst. No, you want kill spells. Remember, it's the MTGO cube. There's a bunch of creatures, and they all deal combat and shit. You want Tragic Slip. Uh, yes. Sam wants Scalding Tarn all day long. Not, yeah. even, not even close. Yeah, not even close. I'm taking Bone Shredder. I get Garrick. You get Garrick. Sam gets Char. I think Sam's going one drop. How does that guy not table? Like, he's got to be smart enough to know that no one else wants these cards. He would take Cunning Spark Mage then, but that card's not even good. He's got to he take needs Char. one drops for his ninja and his opposition. I, I, I mean, to be fair, I know that that Rakdos Cackler ends up in his deck, but I do not see how he takes it right here. I think you're just slamming one drops. Alright, alright, let's move on. Augur of Balls for Sam. Probably, uh, potentially Augur of Balls for you, too. Probably. I don't think I can afford to take Jace Bellerin. I mean, I have to look at my curve. No, I can afford to take Jace Bellerin. I'd probably just take Top here. Or the Bloodstained Mire. Yeah, you take Bloodstained Mire. Eh, I have no... I mean, I want to take Bloodstained Mire, too, because I also have... Uh... I have no fixing. You have, um... Yo, you also don't have that super color commitment. It's true. I kind of just like top. I'm not sure why you like top. I think Sam just takes out her bullets here. Okay. Jace Bellerin. Jace Bellerin with the intent to wheel 1-3. Uh, oh, God. Blue elemental black. Oh, Jesus. So Sam gets Stagger Shock. I'll take Fairy Conclave. For Blue Eck will take either Wicker Bow Elder or Living Death. <laughs> Trying to figure out which one will come back. Take Living Death. Yeah, it'll probably... Because you like, still might be able to build around it at this point. Yeah. Sam gets a... Stagger Shock? It's gotta be Stagger Shock. Yeah, yeah, Stagger Shock. Or cards very similar to Stagger Shock. Oh, gosh. Did I get that Urborg? No, I should probably I have the Urborg. Because <laughs> I forgot that Tendrils of Corruption was a card. Yeah. Or Death Cloud. Woo! I guess... I guess I'm still taking tendrils. Ugh. Oh, that's horrid. It that. is horrible. Take call the herd. You could splash it. So. Yeah, I can. I'll take call the herd. Yeah. I think I also probably take call the herd. And I feel like tendrils is gonna come back, which is the sick part. Yeah. What's Sam take? Like firecat here? It's firecat or molten tail mask. Gotta, gotta be firecat. Nothing else. Gotta be firecat. Yeah. Firecat. I get essence scatter. 
you get gray ball pubes and sand gets essence scatter. Sounds about right. Yep. Yep. Oh, Golgari brought farm right in my face. Oh, drowned catacomb near my face, but not on it. Sam gets flash freeze. Flash freeze, I guess. Yeah. Hooray for sideboard cards. Hey, look, your tropical island and your other mic has came back. Boom! I'll take the other one. You have mic goes. I'll take. There. I'll take red board. Sam will probably take. Just show pick. Just show pick. It's all over. It's all over. Trap island. I think it's Ash. Yeah, I think it's a bonus Ashdell. And okay. your short fang came back. Actually. And my tragic slip came but back. You are. You already have that in your deck. His cunning spark mage came back. That is. That is relevant. Yeah. That I is. get Edric. Yeah. I get. Raven elixir of immortality. Ooh, Inferno Titan. Not bad. I get Frixie Obliterator. Woo! Okay, bemoan your mana. Go with my airport. Couple white cards. Uh, Keep it coming. I, I would take Paladin and Vec over eight and a half tails here. Eh, whatever. More as a statement pick. I know. I, well, no, that you don't want to play. Oh, you can go to Earthquake. It is possible to play. Okay. Well, um... So looking at the order in which this happened... Like started off very strong. I could definitely get behind by upheaval. Bitter Blossom, I mean it was in the top three cards we talked about. I mean I was right there with Remand with him. Uh, pack four was the one that had the negate and like no other blue action. And I probably would have still stuck with the negate just to try to like get there. Um, you know, obviously the negate wheeled, so that could have been a really bad pack in general. So, to be fair. But to be fair unfair up to this point. Bitter Blossom, yes, and Archangel are a thing. But then he immediately no, just no, like, no. takes a left turn with Grim Lavomancer. But what I'm saying is, like, his deck ends up being pretty cohesive once you take out, like, Bitter Blossom, Sublime, Archangel, like, Silverblade Paladin, like, those are bad picks. But, like, he has a, got a pretty sweet, aggressive, blue-red deck. Like, that Wake Thrasher that made no sense and the Grim Lava Mancer that made no sense ended up being, like, perfect for this deck. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, cards that aren't usually a thing, he's, like, trying real hard to make them a thing. And, in a way, they are now a thing, but they're still, like, a subpar thing. Yeah. Oh, man, this Leafs game is awesome right now. Well, so that was Sam's draft at the Magic Online Championships. Hopefully we'll have a chance to talk to him about that, you know, get some of his opinions on it. Um... For the handful of you that stayed with us live for that uh, interesting draft viewer, thank you. Uh, it is now 6.30, making us uh, two hours deep of Magic Talk time. So uh, I think with that, we'll see everybody Wednesday night. We'll be here for our regularly scheduled programming, um, hopefully with better, more information. Yeah. Anything else to impart there, Eck? No, I think uh, hopefully we'll... Get some answers from Sam. Maybe yeah, on Wednesday. It's not really a rush. I hope. We've got other stuff to talk about. It's going to drive We will congratulate him on his... Uh, was, I will. He, was he fourth place or fifth place? Fourth. Top four. Top four, baby. Good for 9K. 9,000 US Dude, dollars. Magic Online Championships is such an insane... Like, the value you get from winning it is so ridiculous. Is it? 25 grand. Auto queue for the next Pro Tour. Auto queue for Worlds and auto queue for next year's Magic Online Championships, which is minimum four grand. Oh right, yes, yeah, so you get a bonus four grand. I didn't forgot about the bonus four grand. Plus, you're at the World Championships, which is a pretty small tournament as well. And yeah, and then you get on the Pro Tour. Like that is just an insane. Uh, I didn't look about it that way. I think we were like top to bottom. The payout was good because I remember for the Players Championship, well, the top to bottom is very good too. Like last place got four grand. And they have to go to PAX. Yeah. I mean, like, to me, like, all the effort you put into Moto just to get to that point, four grand is the least, the least you could throw them yeah. for, like, spending so much of their life doing it. I mean, the amount of time that Samus plays on Moto, I think that he kind of deserves that money. Uh, yeah. That's certainly true. Anyway. Well, there you have it. So, uh, we'll be back Wednesday after Cube League. We may bring a guest with us. We may not. We'll see how things work out. We never talked to Stefan last week about uh, how he's just destroying Cube League. Yeah, I know. He is really... Need uh, to get his secrets. Yeah, and it's the bonus week for the people that have shown up for all the weeks. Oh, yeah. So, Ek can, uh, you can just draft, like, a deep end deck. Try to hit some of those achievements. Uh, how about, how about old, all gold cards? You want to try for that one? Oh, I should, actually. Oh, the Vin is coming to Cuba this week. Excellent. So well, he'll should. probably go for the gold one. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit, though. Yeah, anyway. You have, you, have, you have league points to occur. It's true. I do. Uh, 